how are you guys doing? Everyone okay? Please let me know where you're tuning in from, where you're watching from, um, what, uh, what town, what village, what galaxy uh, you guys are, are, are tuned in from. So we've got a couple of good stories here for you. And um, I mean, the first song with George, what can I say? Just excellent. We've got people tuning in here from uh, Serbia, from South Africa, from Finland, from New Jersey, from Seattle, from London, Glasgow, Kentucky, Wales, Bangkok, uh, from Calgary in Canada, Los Angeles, Scotland, uh, from uh, Massachusetts, from Alabama, from Montreal, from Toronto, from New Hampshire, from Germany, from Sweden, from Los Angeles, Netherlands, Canada, Egypt, New York, Greece, Toronto, and on and on and on and on. <laughs> excellent, guys. Really excellent. Please, please remember that I'm streaming on YouTube um, as, a, you know, as a, as a demonetized um, outcast. So uh, please do make sure you like the video. And if, you, if you're able to, please send a donation on PayPal, uh, Patreon, or Rumble. Because, um, you know, uh, th this is part of the censorship regime that has been enacted by the Zionists in the last months. So because of that, because I told the truth about October 7th, they, they've uh, demonetized the channel. And by the way, we're going to revisit that in just a moment, because as expected, we have more and more revelations coming out that they lied and they lied about a lot of things. So, so let's get, let's get to it. But first I want to talk about, um, I want to talk about Galloway's victory because, um, there's some really funny things you guys have to see. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, hold on a second. Do you guys see that? Okay. So George Galloway has won! George Galloway has won. And I couldn't be happier because, uh, you know, George Galloway for me is a, is a towering uh, epic in, in the true sense of the term epic figure in in british politics and and especially for for his foreign policy so what you know when i was growing up i um you know i would watch george galloway my my, my mother would say look, look at the tv that's george galloway and you know you'd see him opposing the iraq war uh opposing what's happening in palestine the many massacres in gaza and and i and, and i couldn't be happier that he won and it's not just the fact that he he won <laughs> it's how he's upset the establishment because you have to understand that now that George Galloway is back in Parliament, he's going to be like a thorn in their side. Because right now they're, they're very content with the way things um, have been going, where they can just, you know, help the Israelis uh, commit all these war crimes, and there's no one really to hold them to account. And I mean really hold them to account. I mean really give them a mouthful and an earful. <laughs> That's George, right? There are very few like him. Uh, uh, very, very few like him. I mean... Uh, You'll see his victory speech right now and how he just spanks the media. It's, it's so funny. It's so funny. You have to love him. So here, let me, let me show you this uh, from his uh, uh, victory last night. Keir Starmer, this is for Gaza. You have paid and you will pay a high price for the role that you have played in enabling, encouraging, and covering for the catastrophe presently going on in occupied Palestine in the Gaza Strip. Keir Starmer, this... Very clear message. Very clear message. I mean, the first, the first words are, this is for Gaza. And, and keep in mind, he won by, um, I, I love this word that he kept on using, a thumping majority. He, he did. You know what's so, it's so funny is because Labour Party, they knew that he's going to steamroll them and absolutely bulldoze them. He, they knew this. So what they did is they preemptively withdrew their, their they dezoned their candidate, basically. So what happened is that they, they're now coming out and saying, oh, well, uh, this is Keir Starmer who's saying that, right? who George is talking about, the leader, of the, Labour Par <laughs> the, 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 the leader of the Labour Party, they're saying, well, George only won because Labour didn't put forward a candidate. Absolute, absolute rubbish. If you look at the, the, the results of the, uh, the election, 
Labour didn't even come in second place. You know, there's a guy who came in second place that no one's ever heard of. And he just goes to show you, and I, and I don't say that in, in any demeaning manner whatsoever. On the contrary, I, it goes to show you how despised um, uh, the Labour Party and the, uh, uh, the Tories are. Um, and they knew he's going to steamroll them. They, they knew this. And uh, this is my favourite comments. I mean, th this one killed me. Listen to this. Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak are two cheeks of the same backside. And they both got well and truly spanked tonight here in Rochdale. <laughs> It's so good. It's so good. Oh man, excellent. And then you know the the the, the vultures in the press. They try to descend on him. And you can. It's funny because they people film them. Someone from the BBC who got caught, uh, uh, you know, in the background, like basically trying to coordinate some sort of, you know, uh, uh, gotcha moment against George. And they just fail so miserably. So 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 miserably. I'll show you this one from from uh, Sky News. Um, you know, it, it's. It's just really, it, it's painful. It's actually painful to watch, but uh, most, most deserved for the media. Listen to this. The Prime Minister is saying We're talking that as if this is God. We're talking I, about little Rishi Sunak in the fag end of his Prime Ministership. Don't talk to me as if he's come down from the Mount with tablets of stone. The things that he says are somehow meant to awe me. They may awe you, they don't awe me. A lot of people have just watched what the Prime Minister said. This is your opportunity to respond to what he said. Well, he says that the, the, there are forces here at home trying to tear us apart. He is implying you are a divisive well, figure. Well, you have that, run an election campaign that has, that has tried to appeal particularly, and who not won? entirely, who to won? one section of the community. Who won the election? Me or Rishi Sunak? I've got the democratic mandate here, not Rishi Sunak. He didn't even come second. He was lucky to come third. So don't put to me statements made by Rishi Sunak as if I'm supposed to be impressed by them. We he, don't, don't, he don't impress me much. We at Sky have spent some time today on the streets of Rochdale, and there are people who say that they feel intimidated oh, by God. people around, like, like you and the people that have supported you. I have just and they, and they, and they have pointed I out have that you have concentrated your campaign on foreign affairs, and they worry that Rochdale I, will not I be the winner. Mandate. That's my answer to you. I was just elected with a thumping majority by the electorate in Rochdale. That's all that matters to me. Why are there people in the streets of Rochdale well, today worried? Well, people voted yesterday, and they voted for me. Why is that difficult for you to grasp? Why are there people on the streets worried? There may be people who didn't vote for me who are worried, but the majority, the thumping majority, voted for me. I've got the mandate, and I'm going to the House of Commons with it. And it's a mandate, you think, to do what? Because there are people that listen to what you say, mm. what you say about whether or not Israel has a right to exist, what you say about what many Jewish people think are we, it threatening slogans. We had this slogans. conversation last night. Why are you reheating it? Because in the light of the Prime Minister's... Don't keep statement. telling me about the Prime Minister as if he was Moses. Do you not respect the Prime Minister? <laughs> he's, 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 I don't res Do I respect the Prime Minister? I despise the Prime Minister. <laughs> Thank you. Th this is how you have to speak to people. And this is, this is what I love about George. That he's he's uh, bold, he, he's he's honest, he's straightforward, uh, uh, he's direct, and the thing is, this differentiates him. This is what sets him apart from Jeremy Corbyn. Is that Jeremy Corbyn? You know, he might have he might have had his heart in the right place, but when it came down to it, he didn't know how to handle these vultures and these cowards. George Galloway, I mean, he just he he, he it's like. It's like that opening scene in Lord of the Rings, you know, when you see <laughs> when you see Sauron coming out and just like throwing all of these troops aside. Obviously, Galloway is, is the opposite of Sauron, but the way he just deals with journalists, it's 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 exactly like this. And you you can't give them any quarter whatsoever, not an inch, not an inch, not an inch. And he just does it over and over and over again. Look at this, another brilliant clip. No state has a right to exist. Not the Soviet Union. Not Czechoslovakia. Not the Zionist apartheid state of Israel. A lot of people think that the phrase from the river to the sea is racist and anti Semitic. Do you? Are there really a lot of people? I appreciate there are a lot of people in the media bubble, in the political <coughs> class, who at least pretend to. Uh, but what is objectionable about people being free between a river and a sea? Jewish it, people think it's intimidatory, well, and they think it's well, not uh, the Jewish people. On, not the Jewish people on the demonstrations for Gaza yeah. chanting it. Some Jewish people say that they find it uh, these things, but 
is, is that something worth respecting? Uh, no, because the Palestinians have a right to be free. And they have a right to be free between the river and the sea. Now, if you're really asking me what should be the final uh, state of affairs in Israel-Palestine, well, my, my position is quite well known. I think there should be one democratic and secular state between the river and the sea. And if I was doing their marketing, I'd call it the Holy Land. So you don't want Israel to exist? I, well, no state has a right to exist. Not the Soviet Union, not Czechoslovakia, not the Zionist apartheid state of Israel. I believe that the best solution for everybody is, as it was in South Africa, freed from apartheid, a democratic state where white people and black people, Jews, Christians, Muslims, live as equal citizens under the law. That's what I believe. I appreciate you don't believe it and that there are others who don't believe it, but it's a legitimate view. It's one that has already been adjudged uh, in law in Britain uh, to be a legitimate one, and I hold it, and I got a mandate for it tonight. So again, for, for, for those of you who are, who are, um, who are in the U.S., I've, I've got to mention to you that Rochdale, where, you know, the constituency that he just won is, is up north in Manchester, so just, just so you know that. Um, and, you know, I, it, it's funny because as soon as he won, and, and they knew this was coming, Rishi Sunak, the prime minister, who is apparently the prime minister, and this is again so funny because th he's, he hasn't been elected by anyone. You have a tiny percentage of, of the Tories that selected Rishi Sunak, just as many of his predecessors were selected, not elected. And, th and, and so the irony of him coming out and saying this, this you know, garbage is, is really funny. So let me, let, me, let me play this to you. I'm not going to play all of it, don't worry, but just the first moments. In recent weeks and months, we have seen a shocking increase in extremist disruption and criminality. What started as protests on our streets has descended into intimidation, threats, and planned acts of violence. Jewish children fearful to wear their school uniform, lest it reveal their identity. Muslim women abused in the street for the actions of a terrorist group they have no connection with. Now our democracy itself is a target. Council meetings and local events have been stormed. MPs do not feel safe in their homes. Long-standing parliamentary conventions have been upended because of safety concerns. And it is beyond alarming that last night the Rochdale by-election returned a candidate who dismisses the horror of what happened on October the 7th, who glorifies Hezbollah and is endorsed by Nick Griffin the racist former leader of the BNP. I need to speak to you all this evening because this situation has gone on long enough and demands a response not just from government, but from all of us. Britain is a patriotic, liberal, democratic society with a proud past. Okay, so a couple of points there because I, I, there's so much rubbish in there to unpack. It's, it's, it's quite incredible. Number one, I, Nick Griffin is, uh, and the BMP, I mean, I, what, what is, what does that have anything to do with, with George Galloway? This is like saying, you know, um, it's, it's like, it's like saying, uh, Donald Trump approves of, uh, uh, you know, AOC or something like that. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to give you some, some random analogy. It, it just, what utter rubbish. These, these are, uh, you know, George Galloway and, and the British Workers' Party and, and Nick Griffin are on two opposing ends of the spectrum. They have literally absolutely nothing to do with each other. That's number one. But he's, he's, he's dropping that in there to try and paint George Galloway as a racist, which is the, the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my, in my life. And I hear a lot of dumb things watching the news. <laughs> and then after that, he says that, you know, um, uh, he, he, uh, he glorifies uh, Hezbollah or something. What, what, what's new about that? And what's, first of all, what is bad about that? And what is new about that? I can show you a clip. I have it pulled up of George Galloway, uh, uh, you know, saying this in 2006. And Hezbollah are a legitimate resistance group, just like Hamas are a legitimate resistance group. They're a political party and they have their armed wings. What's wrong with that? I mean, this guy is talking about democracy he hasn't even been elected. Once again, I must repeat this. He is an unelected fart. 
He's a fart. No one's ever heard of him. Okay? He's a fart. George Galloway has been doing this for a long time. This is the seventh time that George Galloway's been elected to, to uh, the House of Commons. The seventh time. And in the fourth constituency. Do you know how difficult it is for someone in their own constituency? Or shall we say, you know, of, uh, of course, remember Rochdale, he, he has roots in there. His daughter was born there, I believe, and, um, uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, other members of his family. So he, he has roots there. But the point is that wherever he goes, he's still popular. Do you know how difficult it is for someone to get elected in one constituency or one state or one county? Or, you know, it, 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 it's, it's extraordinarily difficult, never mind to go somewhere else and then win again and then do it four different times and seven in total. I mean, how, you, how many people can say that about themselves in any country? Very, very, very few. Very few, if any. So, you know, to come here and act like... It, it's, really, it's really funny to me because, you know, George Galloway was, <laughs> was doing this when Rishi, Rishi Sunak wasn't even born. And, and he's coming out and pretending like he knows any better. Look what... Look what George Galloway started doing afterwards. He started shit posting on Twitter, and I love it. <laughs> he said, "Why don't you call a general election, you moral and political dwarf?" <laughs> oh my god, I, I love the double podium over there. He needs like two. He needs two just to reach the microphone. I love it. I love it. It's so funny. Really, it's so funny. Um, and then you have David Cameron again, an another fart coming out and saying, "Oh yes, the prime minister is quite right to speak out like this." Extreme Islamism and far right groups. What extreme Islamism? What far right groups? What does that have to do with George Galloway? Please answer me this. This is a left group, a leftist group that, that uh, is completely anti racist, that, that is truly, I mean, to the meaning, left and anti racist. And they're just trying to smear them as, as, as far right and then also say Islamist. What is Islamist? You know, George posted, <laughs> he posted some funny photo over here. He said, This is my Islamist campaign team taking a break in the regal. <laughs> No, I love it. I, I really love it. It's, it he, he's been do doing such a great job at trolling them today and just making mincemeat, absolute mincemeat out of the prime minister, out of the labor leader, out of the media establishment. Mincemeat. Mincemeat. And it's because he doesn't mince words, no pun intended. Re truly, it's because he, he is straight to the point. They're not, they're not used to this, the media. They're not used to someone being honest, being straightforward. They're used to bullying people and they get away with it because the, the, the victim is, is, or the target is not speaking, um, you know, in a clear, uh, enunciated uh, and articulate manner. And, and, you know, George, of course, excels at this. Um, you can see also the reaction from people to the, to the Sky journalist I was showing you earlier. Uh, live on Sky News, with his first reaction to the address by the Prime Minister. You can hear some of the, you can see some of the reactions to... <laughs> the way that George Galloway has responded to the Prime Minister's speech, to that extraordinary Friday night address on the steps of Downing Street. And you can see some of the atmosphere that I think the people of Rochdale have experienced themselves during this by-election uh, over the last uh, few days. And you can see the febrile atmosphere and the anger uh, in this room about an hour before uh, rally. They're angry at you. I mean, I'm not saying it's okay to heckle the guy while he's doing his job, but, you know, they're angry at you because you're coming there and you're, 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 it's a you're, dog, whist you're dog whistling. You know, you're pretending like, oh, eh, you know, Israel, this, this. No, get to the point. Get, get to the point. Just say you're there to try and sabotage the win, which you fail to do, by the way. Um, here, here's another... Uh, uh, Here's, here's another one of these memes he posted. I mean, it's just so funny, honestly. It's so funny. And, he, and he's, of course, put MP back in his name on Twitter. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the first time and, and the many subsequent times that George will go into the House of Commons and start really laying into them. Because he's the only one who's qualified and who's willing to do this. That's, that's really what it is. Um, and, uh, you know, it's funny. Rishi Sunak is talking about the safety of MPs. It's, just a, it's very funny he brings up this point because... When you look at the safety of MPs, George Galloway, I don't know if he was the first, but certainly in my, in my recollection, in, in modern times, he was certainly the first to get, uh, get assaulted, right? There, there's, it's even on video, and, and there's basically an Israel supporter, a Zionist, who, who went and beat George Galloway to the point that he had to be uh, hospitalized. 
and uh, they caught the guy and he went to prison for, for I think, 20 months, something like that. Um, and then when he, if, if I'm not mistaken, when he was released, he started threatening Galloway again. And then instead of going back to jail, he, he, he gets, you know, just a, a fine to pay. But anyway, my point is just that at the time, no one opened their mouths. No one said a thing. And, and so, you know, after that, you had one, I think two MPs who, who were killed, who were assassinated, basically. Um, and, and it comes from the fact that, you know, when George was attacked, they did nothing to, to protect him. They wouldn't, like, you, you, you have to imagine how serious that is, right? Like, that an MP is attacked um, in, in broad daylight uh, and has to be put in hospital. And then you, you go back to work and no one says a goddamn thing. I mean, it's really shocking. It's truly shocking. Um, but of course, you know, if, if it comes to uh, a, a Jewish MP, um, they'll start, you know, even making things up and saying, oh, they're such poor victims. People have been saying this and that to them when actually what they're being told is just legitimate political criticism of Israel. But when George was hit, they've said nothing. So it's very funny. And also this idea that he's only concerned with foreign policy. That's rubbish. That's absolute rubbish. Um, you know, I was, I, I was very honored when they, when they made me... Um, uh, an honorary member of the British Workers' Party, and they asked me to do a, a, uh, a campaign video for George. And, and I can tell you for a fact, he wasn't just campaigning on foreign policy. Uh, he was also talking about uh, A&E, uh, you know, maternity services. There's no maternity ward in Rochdale, so he promised to bring that back. Uh, they, so this is all related to healthcare, basically, right? Um, assistance and emergencies. And then, of course, uh, uh, things like the Rochdale Football Club, uh, cleaning up the town hall, there, there are so many things that, that basically labor have, have allowed to, to you know, disintegrate and, and degrade over time that he's going to come in and fix. But let me put, I, I, put, I submit this to you. I, I put it to you that even if, even if you were to say, well, he, he's only campaigning on foreign policy. Well, these two things are, are, are intertwined. When you, when you have money, and instead of giving that money to your own people, you, you go and buy weapons with it to bomb Yemen or bomb Palestine, then you, you have made, you know, you have made the case yourselves, meaning the government, that foreign policy is a domestic issue because the money that is meant to go towards the NHS, that is meant to go towards healthcare, uh, towards infrastructure, towards paying doctors and junior doctors, towards uh, universities, is now being used for war. So, you know, when you are campaigning against the wars, that means you're bringing back the money so it's spent on the people. How is, how is it separate from domestic issues? They're, they're inextricably intertwined. They are one issue. Not to mention the fact that, you know, if you, as a, as a country, support a genocide, you're putting every citizen of that country at risk. I'm, I'm not just talking about the fact that, uh, you know, well, yes, it, it's also one, the image is, of course, one, one, one thing, but that's not the main concern. I'm saying you actually put every citizen at risk. You know, uh, you know what happens if, if uh, you know, you tell someone that you're American or you're British and, and they become hostile towards you physically because your, your government or our governments supported what's happening in Gaza. So you, you, you put everyone at risk. Uh, not to mention the fact that, that you're sending people then from the armed forces to that region uh, who have no business being in that region and you're putting them in harm's way. So once again, you, you have put the lives of your own people and the money of your own people into a war effort that is unnecessary, that is a genocide, that is no, no reason being. So uh, that, that's one thing. And, uh, you know, they just don't like George because he's excellent at foreign policy and, and excellent at... at, at uh, uh, at handling the media. That, that's really what it's about. And it's funny because if you look at the Prime Minister's speech, <laughs> if you look at this afterwards at the, at the, on number 10 on, uh, on their official website, they've removed it. They say, please note political content redacted here. So basically they talk shit about George and then they removed it. It's funny because they made it sound like the whole speech was because of George. So, I mean, why'd you bother come out speaking then and then you tuck your tail between your legs? It's really pathetic. A pathetic performance. And uh, I just wanted to show you quickly some epic clips of, of George from, from, you know, uh, uh, well, one, one last one from tonight, and then I'll show you some, some, um, this one is from, yeah, this one is from uh, last night. Give me a second. No state has. <laughs> I'm, ju I'm just seeing these memes again pop up. I've just been elected. Oh, then they feel that this has been, I've just been about elected. a conflict in the Middle East. I've just been elected. They've spoken. The people of Rochdale have spoken. Give them a chance. You claim this is a victory over Labour. Can it, can it really be claimed as a victory over a Labour party who withdrew their support from their candidate? 
Well, did they withdraw their support from their candidate? They did above the line, but below the line they continued to campaign for them. We've got the pictures of the... Well, on the national press, the Labour Party told their voters yeah, not to Yeah, support. but uh, the candidate was around. The Labour councillors were all campaigning for him in breach of Starmer's supposed injunction, uh, about which he's done nothing. We've sent them, we've sent the Labour Party all the pictures and testimony of people including, this is a criminal offence I'm about to allege, including councillors bringing a Koran into people's houses and asking the voters to swear on the Koran that they would support the Labour candidate, something which, without doubt, could lead to imprisonment. So uh, it's not really true that they withdrew their candidate, but I'll grant you, of course, it was exceptional circumstances. But we got 10,000 votes more than their candidate. And Labour didn't even come remotely second. I'm not even sure if they came fifth. Uh, and the Conservatives were soundly beaten uh, by a local independent that never featured in a single feature uh, in the by-election coverage. So it's a pretty remarkable result. What do you make of the concern there is? Yeah. It, it, it is it is a remarkable result, although um, it was it was the easiest election to predict. <laughs> um, but here, here's some epic clips of George. Uh, this is <laughs> um, this is from 2009. I found someone posting this saying George pulling out wads of cash to hand over to Hamas. I mean, the, the Israelis are trying to make it sound like it's something bad, it, but it's 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 he's doing it out in the open. And, uh, you know, George's position has been pro-resistance from the, from the beginning. Always from the, from the beginning, you know. And, uh, he's never changed on these positions. So that's another thing that you have to uh, appreciate about him. Palestine. And if I could, I would give them 10 times, 100 times more. We are against this siege. We are opposing this siege. We are breaking this siege. We are breaking this siege. There you go. That's a good, that's a great one. And if you want to watch some of George's best speeches, or um, uh, he's done some. Uh, I think this one was at. Um, I think it was at Oxford. The point is that the Palestinian people are the people whose country has disappeared. And it's now called Israel. The Palestinian people are the people living outside in the refugee camps with a right to go back. That's all. Now, my solution is a democratic one. Everyone who's entitled to live there must be allowed to live there. And they must be allowed to live there as equal citizens. One man, one woman, one vote. What conceivably could be wrong with that. You wouldn't wish anything else for anywhere else. So why would you wish it for Palestine to be otherwise? Look, you can go on supporting Israel if you like. You can go on blaming the Palestinians as terrorists if you like, even though they are the victims of the terrorists. But all you'll be doing, I warn you, and you're a young man with more at stake than me, all you'll be doing is continuing to fill the swamp with bitterness and hatred. And a terrible harvest can only come from that. There's another really um, excellent um, um, you know, uh, delivery that, that, that George uh, uh, gave in the, in the United States. I told you guys about it last time. He was basically uh, asked to come to some congressional hearing in the US. And I told you, if there's one congressional hearing that you ever watch in your life, it should be this one. This is a small excerpt that these forged documents existed and were being circulated amongst right-wing newspapers in Baghdad and around the world in the immediate aftermath of the fall of the Iraqi regime. Now, Senator, I gave my heart and soul to oppose the policy that you promoted. I gave my political life's blood to try to stop the mass killing of Iraqis by the sanctions on Iraq, which killed a million Iraqis, most of them children. 
Most of them died before they even knew that they were Iraqis. But they died for no other reason other than that they were Iraqis, with the misfortune to be born at that time. I gave my heart and soul to stop you committing the disaster that you did commit in invading Iraq. And I told the world that your case for the war was a pack of lies. I told the world that Iraq, contrary to your claims, did not have weapons of mass destruction. I told the world, contrary to your claims, that Iraq had no connection to Al-Qaeda. I told the world, contrary to your claims, that Iraq had no connection to the atrocity on 9-11-2001. I told the world, contrary to your claims, that the Iraqi people would resist a British and American invasion of their country and that the fall of Baghdad would not be the beginning of the end, but merely the end of the beginning. Senator, in everything I said about Iraq, I turned out to be right and you turned out to be wrong. And a hundred thousand people have paid with their lives. Sixteen hundred of them American soldiers sent to their deaths on a pack of lies. 15,000 of them wounded, many of them disabled forever on a pack of lies. If the world had listened to Kofi Annan, whose dismissal you demanded, if the world had listened to President Chirac, who you want to paint as some kind of... I mean, truly excellent. He, George truly bodied, as one of you said, the, uh, the, the US Senate. I mean, you know, when I watched this when I was young, just blown away. You know, re really blown away. And to this day, when I watch it again, it gives me goosebumps. They, they, he couldn't even look at him. You saw that senator? He couldn't even look at George. He couldn't even look him in the eyes. Because he know, he's, he's overcome with shame. As he should be. As he should be. George is a, George is a winner. He's always on the right side of history. Uh, I, you know, he's the only person where I look at Parliament and I feel like he actually represents me. The only one. Uh, really. He's the only person in that building that I feel actually represents me. The only one. And, uh, you know, he has been effective without and within Parliament. This is his seventh time going in there. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I know that he will do Gaza justice. He'll do everything he can. And he'll, do, he'll also focus not just on foreign policy, although once again, the, the, the in, foreign policy is inextricably intertwined with domestic policy, but he'll focus on both things and he'll make Rochdale a better place. Um, you know, and, 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 and uh, I, I'm... I'm really happy they asked me to, to, to uh, um, you know, help campaign for him. Uh, and I'm, I'm proud of the Workers' Party. I'm, I'm proud of George Galloway. And uh, one time when I was on his, on his program, he said something to me. He said that um, when uh, he, he retires, that uh, I'll have to take up the torch from him. Uh, you know, I hope that won't be for a very, very, very long time. But, you know, it's, it's an honor nonetheless to be, to be told that by George Galloway. And... Uh, uh, again, congratulations to him, to the whole team, to everyone who campaigned for him. Because uh, I saw, I saw them when I was in the when I was covering the Assange thing, how how tirelessly they were campaigning uh, uh, all over the place for him. So well done, guys! Really, pat yourselves on the back. Great job, and uh, the work continues. Let me show you some stuff that happened um, in Gaza, which is, uh, I mean, truly. Tru truly so horrific that even the mainstream media couldn't ignore it, which is rare. You know, they'll usually take a, a while to, to actually give the truth if they ever do. But, but this was so awful that they, they, couldn't even, they couldn't even lie about it. So this has been called the Flower Massacre. What happened is that food came in, uh, driven in by the Israelis into Gaza. And again, this, this doesn't even begin to cover the, the, um, uh, you know, the basic needs of the people in Gaza. But nevertheless, this is how, what happened. They, they, they were driving in these trucks, and then when people started rushing towards the trucks, which is, you know, understandable, given that they are, they're being starved to death in a genocide, the Israelis began opening fire at them. They killed over 100 people and wounded 750 people. I mean... You know, if this, had if this had happened in Europe, if this had happened in Paris, if this had happened in Berlin, what, what kind of reaction do you think that would elicit? 750 people wounded, over 100 killed. 
I mean, it's, it's, it's a massacre. And it's just one of many massacres. Almost every single day, you're having, you're, you're having things like this happen. Maybe not on the same scale, but certainly hundreds being killed every day in the most dis horrific fashion. And someone in this flower massacre, it's called flower because they were rushing just to get flour, you know, because there's, people are eating animal feed in Gaza. I did, I did an hour-long video on that um, uh, in the last live stream. Um, you know, the, one person was crushed with a tank, and I'm not going to show you the photos because it's so... Um, it's so bad, you know, but, but they, they were, for, I mean, what can I say? What can I say after, after, after these things? So even the BBC came out and debunked what the Israelis were doing. Even CNN. This massacre was so bad, even the mainstream media couldn't cover for the Israelis. And, and I say that with, 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 a, with a small disclaimer, because if you look at the headlines... If you look at the language that they're using, they're still covering for them. You know, this headline from the BBC, for example, which says, what video and eyewitness accounts tell us about Gazans killed at aid drop. This, this is extremely, I mean, it, it, it sounds so scientific. And, and you know, um, I mean, I, I wouldn't have written that like this. You, if, if Palestinians had done that to Israelis, you know, I, I, I bet you anything you like, this headline would be different. It, it should say, you know, Hundreds of people wounded, um, hun over a hundred massacred by Israeli forces. That that is the simple headline. And then, of course, inside you can explain to us the the you know how you you arrived at this conclusion, but uh, and and show us the forensic evidence. But I, I this is too tame. This is far too tame. You know, Gazans killed at a drop. What does that mean? Did did a box of cornflakes fall on 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 five people and kill them? Were they all electrocuted? Did lightning strike? Did, did someone have bubonic plague? They all had heart, you know, heart failure at the same time. What does that mean Gazans, you know, uh, killed age? Or how were they killed? Who killed them? How many were killed? This is too tame for me. This is not, this is not good enough. So they're still covering for Israel. You know, make no mistake, they're still covering for them. Now they have this, this drone footage. They had this drone footage, which was uh, published by the Israelis. And what the Israelis did basically is they told on themselves. You know, they, 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 it, by releasing this, people who, are, who know what they're talking about when they look at drone footage were able to see immediately that this has been edited, it's been played with, it's, it's been doctored. So you can see here, if you, if you look at some of the screenshots that the BBC uh, uh, provide us with here, they say these people in red are, are motionless people on the ground, okay, that have been executed, that have been killed by the Israelis. And it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. Um, The IDF, the Israelis won't release the full footage, okay? And then here, if you look at, if you look at the, um, uh, yeah, the video released by the IDF is not one single sequence. It has been edited into four sections. So basically, the Israelis have cut out um, important parts from the video where you don't see the people being massacred, but you see them afterwards as they're lying motionless on the ground. Because when someone's looking at that, it's, it's more difficult to understand. I mean, just looking at this footage, you know, if, if, if they hadn't put any circles or a legend on it, it's difficult to know what's going on, right? But when you can see the, the tracer rounds being used, uh, tracer rounds light up in the dark, um, uh, you know, the, the infrared camera might pick that up. The satellite imagery might pick that up. The drone footage... Uh, um, might show that. And then, of course, you would see people who are moving then suddenly become motionless. It becomes much, much easier to see what's going on. But the Israelis think that by releasing a few bits that they can kind of, you know, show, oh, look, we're being transparent. We're showing you what happened. We didn't do anything wrong. You should see the disaster on CNN. Look at this interview, how, how Amanpour uh, catches him in a lie and he doesn't know how to get out of it. I think the first question, if you could answer, is... Who were these aid, who, who was this aid being driven in by or for? The UN and the normal, you know, known aid agencies said that they had nothing to do with it. Do you know who it was? I know the following, that in order to help alleviate uh, the food shortage in Gaza, that we authorized in a convoy of, I think, some 30 trucks uh, entered uh, Gaza last night, headed for the northern Gaza Strip. And uh, uh, this shows that Israel is interested in seeing aid and foodstuffs reach the civilian population. 
Unfortunately, uh, 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 we saw a situation where there was a mass uh, casualty tragedy where it looked like the uh, civilians were storming the trucks. A mass casualty tragedy. What kind of fucked up English is that? You mean a massacre? Uh, uh, trying to, to, to take the food uh, um, out of desperation. Uh, and uh, and uh, people, uh, a, a crowd was pushing and shoving and, and people were killed. I can't tell you the exact numbers. I don't, as you know, don't trust the numbers put out by the Hamas-controlled Ministry of Health in Gaza. Uh, there were reports that maybe the drivers were, were driving over parts of the crowd. It, it, it appears to be... Oh, well, the, you know, you don't, you don't trust the Hamas numbers. That's excellent, right? Because you have your own drone footage, which, which we're looking at on the screen. So why don't, you, why don't you count them for us, then, if you don't trust the Hamas uh, ministry, right? I mean, I think we can all agree that that's, that's the easy solution, right? You don't trust them, then count it for us, would you? Or just give us the video. I'll count it myself. Be a, a tragedy, but I can tell you Israel was not involved directly in any way. When you say not involved directly in any way, what do you mean? I mean, you enabled these convoy, this convoy, as you said, and your forces are there on the ground and open fire. They said it themselves. What does that mean, not involved in any way? So the, this was, we, well, we allowed the aid to come in. We were involved that way. That, that's our policy, to allow food to go into Gaza for the civilian population. But in the incident of people storming the trucks and the way the truck drivers behaved, what, okay, what, what a lie. No, number one, your policy is actually not to allow food into Gaza because I have your defense minister on camera saying that on October 7th. No food, no fuel, no electricity, no water. That, that is your policy. When you, look, man, when, when you put someone into a concentration camp and then you throw a few crumbs at them, that doesn't mean that you have stopped starving them. You're still starving them. You just happen to give them a few crumbs, but you're still starving them. That is your policy. And, and people getting squashed and pressed, and uh, uh, apparently be, there being a mass casualties. Uh, Israel was not there on the ground. This guy lies worse than some children. Like, there are some children that know how to lie better than this. And you, you have to remember, this guy is not just a, an Israeli spokesperson or, or one of their spokespersons. He's supposed to be a special advisor to Netanyahu. And yes, some of you have correctly pointed out in the, in the comment section, which I've said to you before as well, that he has an Aussie accent. Once again, do you, do you understand what we talk about when we say settler colonialism? You've got, I mean, Australia itself is a settler colony. <laughs> but w when you have people that are coming from, from all over the place and, and every single Israeli spokesperson you listen to, including in French, right? I can tell in French from the accent, this guy's from, from France. He, he grew up in France. He's French. He's French Jewish but calling himself Israeli, as if he comes from Palestine. Same thing with these guys. You've got a Scottish one who goes on Sky News often, Scottish accent, you know, obviously you've grown up in Scotland. Um, you've got another one who's from London, uh, this, this fart called Levy. And then this is Mark, um, uh, the Australian one. Every single one of them has a, you know, a, a Western Anglo accent because they're from Anglo-European, Anglo-American countries. They're not from Palestine. Okay, but they... <laughs> I love her voice. Let me rewind just a few seconds. ...incident of people storming the trucks and the way the truck drivers behaved and, and people getting squashed and pressed and uh, uh, apparently be there being a mass casualties. Uh, Israel was not there on the ground. Okay, but they did open fire and people... I swear to God he sounds South African for a second. Maybe I might have gotten it wrong. Maybe he's South African. I've always thought he's Australian for some reason. In any case, it's the same thing. We go back to the same... <laughs> <laughs> another settler colony, another Anglo settler colony. I think I'm, I'm picking up South African in there. The aid to come in, we are involved that way. That, that's our policy, to allow food to go into Gaza for the civilian population. But in the incident of people storming the trucks and the way the truck drivers behaved and, and people getting squashed and pressed and uh, uh, apparently be, there being a mass casualties, uh, Israel was not there on the ground. Okay, but they did open fire and people were killed. So I'm completely confused by what you're saying because they admitted, the IDF that, spokesman said it, said it on our air, that a, they opened fire. That's a, that's a separate incident. Okay. Not connected to the tragedy with the trucks. Uh -huh. uh, that was, that was, that was different place, different time. I mean, he, you know, he, he's definitely Australian. Yeah, he's definitely Australian. But uh, what, what the hell's going on? I mean, he, he lies so badly. A separate incident will enlighten us to you, Mark. When did that happen? 
it's so 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 horrible it's so horrible really you just it's like you you you're not only dealing with the with the 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 atrocity itself of of this crime happening it's like they they go and then start lying on top of it and putting more lies on top of lies it's it's such a so, so much energy they 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 put in so much energy into the propaganda it's really something uh you know th there are some videos here that i'm afraid i'm not going to be able to show you because i mean first of all they they're they're already heavily uh, censored, um, which, which is a, a good thing, I suppose. But YouTube is obviously going to give me trouble, so I'm not going to show them to you. Uh, and uh, again, you know, this is another way that YouTube stops me from doing my job. Um, I'll show you what the... Uh, the <laughs> I mean, this is really funny from the Germans, what, what they put out. They put out this statement here. Um, it's actually two. Let me, let me get you the second half. Yeah, so they said here... They say that people sought food for their families and were killed. I am shaken by the reports from Gaza. Shaken. Okay. The Israeli army must fully investigate the incident and how the mass panic and shootings occurred. My sympathies are with the families of the victims. Yes, I'm sure they are. Um, in Gaza, people are closer to death than to life. More humanitarian aid must get in immediately. A humanitarian pause is more urgent than ever so the hostages can finally be freed from Hamas. The dying in Gaza stops and I think... She means the killing in Gaza. <laughs> Were they so desperate to remove the word killing and say the dying in Gaza stops? No, it's, 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 it's a genocide. And aid can be distributed safely. I mean, there's so, much, there's so much wrong with this because, first of all, um, you know, Germany can fuck off, honestly, when, it, when anything is, is, is concerned, okay? <laughs> they can go to hell. Um, and they are, they are in the number two country the number two exporter of weapons to uh, the Israelis in this genocide, right? They made at least $300 million, uh, uh, excuse me, euros, uh, from, from the, the last weapon sale, and it's probably higher than that. These are just the ones they've disclosed. So but after the United States, the Germans, who are supposed to be a new, neutral country, uh, uh, and then, of course, removed this, um, uh, you know, when Ukraine started, and even then they were lying. They were, they were sending weapons to, to Saudi Arabia to use against Yemen before that. Um, but anyway, th this, this uh, supposedly neutral country that, you know, never again uh, is doing again and again. Oh, yeah. Germany should have been dissolved, honestly. I mean, just they, they are truly a menace to humanity. I, I, really, everything bad comes out of Germany. Rothschild, Henry Kissinger, <laughs> you, you, you name it, the Nazis, you name it. Everything bad comes out of Germany. Should have, should, we should have dissolved it after World War II. Uh, really. I mean, that, enough. Two world wars, enough. Uh, and then on, to on top of that, they go back to the same old behavior. You know, they want to they wanna export weapons. They want to kill people. They want to commit genocide. Never mind what happened in Namibia. You guys, you guys know, of course, what happened in Namibia. This is right before World War I. That's another genocide that they, um, you know, they colonized Namibia. They used to call it South, um, Southwest Africa. Uh, and, I mean, just really scandalous, scandalous. And then they have the nerve to talk about, like, they give a, they give a crap. Even, even when they're pretending to give a crap, they still have to put in this thing with Hamas and the hostages. Like, you know, somehow this could all stop if you would just release the hostages. Well, you know, I'm glad you see it that way. Uh, uh, because I can also, I, I submit the same thing to you. This, all, this could all stop if you would release the Palestinians that you took hostage. Because if you look at this chronologically, who took hostages first? It's the Israelis. The Israelis kidnapped all these Palestinians and put them in prison. And for years and years and years and years, no one would do anything about it. No one would get, get them released. No one would listen to their pleas. No one would allow the Red Cross to come and look at them. They just threw them in dungeons. And then now when October 7th happens and some Israelis get taken hostage, and by the way, they treated, you know, immensely, immensely uh, better. Uh, you're, you're, you're acting like this is the, the, the root of the conflict. So please go to hell. This is what it looked like when the Israelis massacred all these people during the flower massacre. Uh, you had people on the beach huddled with, you know, basically around fires, um, waiting for food come up, to come in. I'm going to go to the hospital. 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 I'm Here's another, this is a good tweet from Elijah who said that uh, this is the US uh, quote unquote balance. The United States dropped the cargo of three planes, uh, three so three cargo planes worth of humanitarian aid on Gaza. Not one truck, not one truck, uh, and 230 planes of ammunition to Israel. 
Never forget the Israeli flower massacre. I'll go more into detail now about these trucks and the aid deliveries and what a sham it is. But nevertheless, if you, if you look at, uh, at Wikipedia, how they're titling this, this flower massacre that just happened, I mean, it, it's again another scandal. They call it the El Rashid humanitarian aid incident. What, what does that mean, the humanitarian aid incident? People were delivering aid and then they suddenly transformed into dolphins. Suddenly no one had, had clothes on anymore. They were, you know, a black hole appeared and swallowed them up. What, what does that mean, incident? What incident? Someone, someone was sick. Someone had to go to the doctor and inc incident is vague. I'm sorry, this is too vague for me. You see how they always, they always uh, uh, exaggerate as much as possible when they're trying to, to, to talk about Israelis, you know, being victims or, 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 or and, and usually it's not even true, right? But then when it comes to Palestinians and, and it's documented, it's filmed, it's recorded, there are, there are eyewitness accounts, L literally everything, right, is, is presentable as, as uh, foolproof evidence. They, they then come and say, ah, oh, well, you know, it was an incident, so, you know, there was a space-time incident, a black hole appeared, you know, something happened. There was an incident. The trucks just broke down, you know, we, I don't know, something happened, an incident. They're, they're really, they're really uh, scandalous. They're, they're truly scandalous, honestly. Here's um, uh, a statement from, from, from someone, uh, from one witness who says, We went to get flour. The Israeli army shot at us. There are many marches on the ground, and until this moment we are withdrawing them. There is no first aid. So the Israelis, what they love to do is they'll basically go into, a, um, into Gaza. They'll go into, uh, you know, Jenin or, or Nablus. They'll shoot up people. And then when the ambulances try to, try to get uh, the wounded and pick them up, They'll block the ambulances, and I've shown you videos of this. It's, it's, it's been documented a million times since before I was even born. Uh, you know, and, and this is a, c a common Israeli practice to block ambulances. So, so it, it's not only that they're murdering people, it's that they're making life as difficult as possible um, uh, for, for health workers to actually reach the wounded. So here you can see how, um, you know, how bad, that, how bad this, this quote-unquote incident, as they're calling it, was. Incident. So you see how they're evacuated. They don't even have ambulances to, to do it. That, that it's horrible. It's horrible. You know, this reminds me of the, that, that incident, um, that famous incident where you had these three boys uh, on the beach in Gaza who were playing football and then the Israelis uh, uh, from a gunboat, they just, you know, f randomly fired on them and murdered them just for fun. I don't know why it makes it makes me think of that. Here, this is another man. I, I really don't know what to say. I mean, what, what, 
every every single time I see one of the, on one of these videos, um, the fr the frustration, the anger, the desperation. All I can think is fuck the West, fuck Israel, fuck all these so-called Arab uh, uh, kingdoms that are just Western puppet states created by the West, literally drawn on a fucking map by the West so they can control oil and the trade routes. Just fuck them from A to Z, from top to bottom, from, from front to backwards. Fuck all of these people. They're truly the scum of the earth. The scum of the earth. There, there, is, there is no worse... Uh, um, you know, there, there, there are no worse human beings than them in, 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 today and in all of history. There, there, are, there are none, simply none. I did one, a one-hour, uh, uh, you know, expose the other day of how people are starving in Gaza, eating animal food. Would you, would you eat animal food? Would you eat animal food? What, what do you think an Israeli would say if they were forced to eat animal food? Would they eat cat food? Would you eat your dog's food? I mean, th think of how not just un un unsanitary that is uh, and, and, and unhealthy, but how degrading that is that you're supposed to take, you know, horse, horse uh, uh, and donkey food and try and grind that up and make bread out of that. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Fuck Israel. Fuck everything to do with Israel. Fuck Zionism. If you're a Zionism, fuck you too. If your family are Zionist, fuck them too. If your friends are Zionist, fuck them too. If your, wor your colleagues and your workplace are Zionist, guess what? Fuck them too. You are fucking scum. You would never eat dog food. You would never allow yourselves and your fucking friends to have to eat horse food and fucking donkey food and cat food. You hypocritical pieces of fucking shit. Fuck everything to do with you. Fuck your entire existence. You people are bastards. You're hypocrites and fucking genocidal bastards. I'm done with this all like we have nothing to do with this. You have everything to do with this. You can, you can do something right now. Don't, don't give me this, oh, I have nothing to do with this. Yes, you fucking do. Yes, you do. You know this is happening. You're just trying to ignore it. And, and, and thinking it's going to go away. It's not going to go away. Look at the frustration that's coming out of these people's hearts. Look at the frustration. How, how, much, how much of this are they supposed to take before, it, you know, it, oh, they can have some food now. What is wrong with you? I'm not even talking about the bombs. I'm just, just like, there's no food. There's no water. And they, and, they, and they want to talk about Western civilization. What the fuck is civilized about making people eat cat food? Are you, and, and fucking bird seed and all this shit. Look at, look at this. This is Israeli, Israeli Western civilization. Their heritage minister, Jesus Christ. I mean, it, <laughs> Any minister saying this would be bad enough, but the, the one in charge of heritage who's supposed to be, you know, cultured and, and refined. Look what he says. The so-called month of Ramadan must be wiped out and our fear of this month must, be, must also be wiped out. I mean, I'm not even Muslim and I'm offended at this shit, really. I mean, imagine if, if someone said, well, you know, we have to wipe out Hanukkah or something like that. Imagine the outrage. They'd be quoting it today, tomorrow, in 10 years. You see, you remember, you remember that time when they said they have to wipe out Hanukkah? This, I, this is the same guy who said they should drop a nuclear bomb on Gaza. And then it just keeps on going. This is, this is the next day. This is the day after the massacre. This is the day after the massacre. So, I mean, just, just think about this. The fact that, you know, they're starving. They, they, they're starving. And then when they're trying to run and get food, they get bombed while they're starving. I don't, know, I don't know what to say anymore. This, there, there, there's, there's nothing, you know, no words that, that, that can possibly suffice because Zionists are, are really the scum of the earth. They are truly the worst people on the planet. They are so selfish. You know, they, you, they leave their countries and then go to steal someone else's house and then claim that they are oppressed at the same time. I've never, I've never seen anything like this. You know, usually people, when they invade, they just say, yeah, we're here to invade. You know, they don't, they don't try to mince, mince words or or beat around the bush or pussyfoot. They just say, yeah, we're, we're here, we're bastards. No, the, the Zionists, they, ha they, they have two homes, they got two passports, or their parents got two passports, or their grandparents got two passports. Point is, they ain't from fucking Palestine, are they? And they take your home, and then they pretend that they are the victims because you want them out of your home. They really have some nerve. They, they really have some nerve. I mean, honestly, the nerve of these people, the nerve of these people, Look, I'm, I'm just saying what goes around comes around. There's going to be a day when they will be, you know, they will be in, in, in a similar uh, 
in similar conditions in in in, in a similar uh uh in a similar situation. I don't know how, and I, and I, I don't know when. I have no clue. But what goes around comes around. You, you don't get to do this to people and then get away with that. You don't get to starve people like this. You know, there are children that every single day now are dying in the hospital because of starvation. Not malnutrition. No, no, they're, they're straight up starving to death. Starving to death. It's nothing, there's no other pre-existing condition. And even if there were, guess what? Fuck you. They're dying of starvation. You know, Zionists, they're, they're, really, they're really evil people. They don't understand reason. They don't understand uh, diplomacy. They only understand force. They, it's, not, it's not me who's saying this. I'm just showing you that if you look at history, they only understand force. You know, the Lebanese, they, had to, they, they, they tried everything, everything to get the bloody uh, Israelis out of their country. They, guess what? The only people who were able to do it were Hezbollah. And, and then because Hezbollah win, they say, oh, they're terrorists, oh, they're terrorists. Hamas... Hamas has tried everything. Hamas wrote a letter to Bush in 2006. They said, look, we're, we're, we're willing to maybe wor work out, you know, a two-state solution here. Maybe, maybe we'll accept Israel. They didn't say that in, in, in these words, but they were, they were basically trying to find a diplomatic settlement, right? When you write a letter to the White House, you're trying to, you're working on diplomacy here. And, and the White House just ignore them. And then what happens the next year? Oh, look at these terrorists. We have to besiege them. So, you know, even, even if you put this flower massacre aside, they're still starving. Even, even on October 6th and October 5th and, and the year before that and the year before that and before that and before that, they're starving. People don't have enough food. People are, are in pain in Gaza. And, and it, you only have Zionists to blame. Some of them are Jewish. Some of them Christian. Some of them are Muslim. Or at least they, they call themselves Jewish, Christian, and Muslim. They, they, they like to look the part, right? I'm talking, of course, about the Netanyahu's, about the uh, Joe Biden's, and the uh, Sheikh bin Zayed's, and, uh, and Mohammed bin Salman. You know, re really just treacherous behavior, absolutely treacherous behavior. It, it, there's, there's only so much you can, you can uh, you know, forgive, and we passed that threshold a long, long time ago. We passed this a long, long time ago. You know, that, that, vi that I mean, I showed you an hour, an hour of videos uh, of you know, people all across Gaza making bread out of animal feed. How degrading how humiliating the israelis like this they 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 see this and they actually derive pleasure from this because they're so sick they're truly sick people you have to be sick and this is not a pardon because actually someone who is sick who is suffering is it's not their fault but but the zionists they are they are conscious of what they're doing they're sick in, a, in an evil way do you understand they're malicious they're cunning they they, they are evil in their behavior Someone who's sick is sick. They can't help it. Zionists can absolutely help it. They choose to be this way. They choose to be assholes. They choose to be murdering genocidal bastards. They choose this. Look, look at their behavior. 75 years of this. And even before Israel was created, they were, they were doing the same crap, massacring Arab villages. You know, they're, they're terrorists. If you, if you, if you uh, care about... Let, let, me say, let me say it this way. Because there's some people who, who you know, think that... Uh, they shouldn't care about Palestinians. Okay, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to put the argument to you another way. If you don't care about Palestinians, and you only care about America, and you only care about Britain, you should still hate the Israelis because the Israelis are terrorists. They tried to kill the U.S. President Harry Truman. They tried to kill Winston Churchill. So if, 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 you're, if you don't have any compassion for Palestinians, you don't think they're human beings, at least give a shit about yourself. At least have some self-respect. You know, Israel is the only country that comes into the UK. Uh, it's not even a country, it's a colony that comes into the UK, comes into the US and tries everything to censor people and, and, and prevent them from having free speech, to prevent them from criticizing them. What the fuck is that? Would you accept if, if Belarus came in and, and started saying, well, you should lose your job because you said something mean about Israel? You would, t you would laugh them out of, the, out of the room. You'd laugh them out of the room. The Israelis shouldn't be laughed out of the room. They'd get kicked in their fucking behinds out of the room. You understand? Two Israeli prime ministers could never visit the United Kingdom because they were wanted terrorists. Always remember that. They were wanted terrorists in the UK. Always remember that. They have been terrorists since their very beginning. They don't, it doesn't matter. They'll, they'll, they'll kill US uh, citizens. They'll kill British citizens. They, they will attack US ships, USS Liberty, if that's what it takes for them to, to, to accomplish their goals. It's always Israel first. Israel first. That, that, that's the mentality. They, there's no such thing as allies. They shouldn't be given an inch. No quarter for Zionists. No quarter. Look at this, this sick, sick, bloody behavior that I... I
put together a bunch. You know, last time I put together these these videos for you, where where these Israelis were were uh, ransacking people's houses, and and you you know you you're not going to believe me when I say I found even more of them. Oh yeah, you you bet you. This is not even everything. I, I found more videos that even I hadn't seen because I thought I'd collected everything. No, no, there's more. There's more. They actually manage to do more and more. It's just so so disgusting and sick. Truly, truly disgusting. You know, I, I let me let me just tell you something. If I were in charge of the the Israeli army, for, for forget the genocide, forget the genocide for a second. Which is, I mean, I, <laughs> you know, let 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 us say that okay, they've normalized this within their ranks, yeah, which they have. Put the genocide aside for a second. Just as a as as a someone in the military, you you should be ashamed that your troops conduct themselves in such a manner. Th this is humiliating that your troops behave like, you know, like a bunch of, of like, you know, a street gang. It's humiliating for, for, for an officer to see this shit. You know, once, twice, 50 gazillion times, Jesus Christ, you have a huge, huge problem here. But the thing is, you have to, you have to understand the Zionist mentality. They, they want this. They want this. They demand this of their troops. This is not an accident. This is not like, oh, Netanyahu and Galant are sitting there and saying, oh, why won't the troops listen to us? We don't like this behavior. No, on the contrary, they are absolutely, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, bloody raving stock mad that they are doing this. They derive pleasure from these things because any, any army would have already whipped these people into shape if they were against this policy. Do you understand? It, it happens in every single armed forces that you have orders coming from the top on how to behave and then you have a few units that disrespect that. This is not the case with the Israelis. This is not a few people being disobedient. This is a rampant culture of, of pervert, murdering, genocidal, uh, uh, disgusting behavior. And I have even more videos to show you than last time. It's, it's, it's truly incredible. It's truly incredible. Thank you to, um, we, we have a, Few people whose whose comments I, I I needed to read out before I continue. So forget, forgive me. I'll I'll proceed in just a second. I want to say thank you to 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 Malik for the generous donation. Thank you also to um to uh to Mark and uh, we also have uh, uh, Fahim and beating my head against the wall. <laughs> That's a good name. I uh, I re I relate to this when I watch these Israeli videos. No, uh, who've joined on Patreon as members. So thank you very much for supporting my channel because the uh, um. The Israeli, uh, uh, the Israelis who, who pretend that they are democratic love to go around censoring people who say anything bad about them. Um, you know, if you don't want anyone saying anything bad about you, just don't behave badly. It's not like, you know, I made any of this up. This is the worst part. I've got video and photo evidence for literally every single thing I say. I back it up because I have to. I don't just make them up like the Israelis. So, you know, it's, it's, it's in your hands. It's in your hands. You don't have to behave like this. You know, the Israelis don't have to. But I guess when you're when you're a colonizer, it's it comes with the uh, it comes with the uh, territory. <laughs> no pun intended. Right? You have you have to behave like this in order to to rationalize stealing someone's home and ransacking their things. Uh, in any case, I'll play crab dance for you guys, and then I'll continue with the with the rest of the uh, um, uh, with the show. Thank you to Elena also for the donation, and we've also got some on Rumble. Uh, that that we've got one here from. Um, Orange Shark says, it feels so good to hear someone say what we all think. <laughs> Thanks for being real and raw. You know, I've, I've been trying to cuss a little less. I think you guys might have, might have noticed that and appreciated the effort that I've put in. But uh, I'm, I'm sorry. That I, I also have limits, you know. I mean, what, what, what do you think people in Gaza are doing? Like, you know, they're pulling the hair out. It, it, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, if I feel this way and you feel this way, how, what do you think the people in Gaza feel like? There are no words to even describe what they are feeling. Truly no words that suffice. Uh, it's really, it's really horrible. Mackage says, might as well continue. It's not like they can demonetize you anymore. Well, yeah, to hell with, to hell with them, honestly. To hell with them. And again, I, I, we've got 2,000 people watching on Rumble. Uh, sorry, on, on, we've got 1,000 on Rumble, but 2,000 on YouTube. Guys, before I do anything else, and I, I'm disappointed in you. I really am. Because I, I, I've been asking you guys to please go on Rumble and make a second account because it demonetized me. I need, I need your help. So please, you know, don't take this personally, but, but I'm just trying to move you. I'm just trying to push you into, into, 
um, into helping both me and you out. Because if anything happens, God forbid, we need to have a backup. I need you to understand that I'm on Rumble as well, that I can actually speak more freely on Rumble, that you can send donations on Rumble, and that you can also share the videos from Rumble. There's no censorship there. Um, so please make an account over there because we need to... Look, we've, we've got two, almost 200,000 people on, on YouTube, but only 25,000 on, on Rumble. So there's a lot of you that haven't subscribed. So please, just, it just takes a minute. I know it's annoying to go sign up on another website, but uh, as far as I know, there's no spam. I don't send you any spam. I mean, there's no newsletter or, or like, oh, check out this video. As far as I know, there are no emails. Um, and it, the, the only purpose is, is to make an account and then subscribe to, to my channel. So please help me out, guys. A lot of people are on Rumble as well. You'll find Glenn Greenwald, uh, you know, Lee Camp. Uh, anyone you can think of on the left, they're, they're also on, on uh, Rumble as well. So... It, it really is worth the effort. It just takes a minute, okay? I'm going to play a crab dance. While I'm playing the crab dance, go and make an account. Please do this for me, all right? I, I, it's the only favor I ask. Thank you. Clap for that, you stupid uh, bastard. Corn Pop was a bad dude. And he ran a bunch of bad boys. Boy, boy. Listen, fuckhead. You fucking crossed the line. Claiming I'm the enemy. You got that, you goddamn son of a bitch? I don't give a fuck what you think, bitch. Good morning. Sunday morning, morning. Cut that bitch out. Thank you for Iron Dome. We lied, we cheated, we stayed on stall. China. 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 And you ain't black. There's always the macro. And then there's the micro. Do not come. Do not come. I'm gonna come. You talking to me? Ladies and gentlemen, I'll have two number nines, a number nine large. We got them. Because I have to do it myself. I know it's not. No. I've fallen and I can't get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. <laughs> oh. Disgusting. She was 12, I was 30, but anyway. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Why you text in? Why, 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 You're getting nervous, man. Calm down. It's okay. Okay, 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 okay. Suck my dick and choke on it. I yield my time. Fuck you! Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who's supporting on, on, um, on Patreon. Again, if you want to support my show, you want to support my work, it's Patreon, uh, Rumble, and uh, PayPal. Yeah, those are the three. Patreon, Rumble, and PayPal, because YouTube is demonetized. So, uh, we've got some donations here as well that we got in the interim from... Uh, this one is from Nima, says, thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you. And we have another one here. Uh, this is from... Give me a second, it's loading. Um, from Trident, thank you very much for the for the donation. I appreciate it. You guys are very kind, and thank you for all the kind comments. Also, uh, that, that that I'm reading, there's there's too many of them to read, so you guys will have to forgive me. Um, we have also another one on on Rumble. This is from um, Mariam, who says, "Please keep up the amazing work." Thank you. Um, we have one from uh, Louise says, "Thank you as always." And some situations fully, <laughs> some situations fully merit profanity, heartbreaking, and infuriating. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, it, it really, it really is outrageous, honestly. Um, Kinky says we share, we share your outrage, Richard. I'm, I'm glad because, uh, you know, it's. Uh, I, try, I try to put things more, more, you know, more, more diplomatically, but uh, you, you, you can't with the Israelis. They, they, um, you know. Anyway, uh, it, it's, 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 it keeps going. I have more things like this, which are really going to make you, your blood boil. It, it doesn't stop there. So let me, let me continue with it, and you're going to see what I'm talking about. So just the other day, I, I made a video about how Israelis are ransacking people's homes in Gaza. They're filming themselves with, you know, th at their own hands, by their, you know, through their own social media networks. Um, they're, they're, they're admitting to these war crimes. Looting is a war crime. Stealing uh, from, from civilian uh, shops, homes is, is forbidden. And yet they, they keep filming themselves doing this. And I put together another collage uh, if you will, another expose of, of uh, you know, Israelis not just looting, but also uh, 
uh, you know, torturing and and saying and basically laughing at, at making light of the fact that Gaza is burning. Uh, re really, just horrific, uh, malicious, uh, evil behavior. There's no other way to describe any of this. There, there truly isn't. Uh, I'm a I'm at a loss for words. So here here you have um, uh, Israelis basically, you know, posing in in. I, I can only assume this is a children's room because of the the pink and the toys. Um, and, you know, I, I showed you last time how they, they regularly take children's toys and make fun of the children, like they, they pretend they're going to school, and then they say, haha, there are no schools left because we destroyed them. And then they'll get inside of a baby's cot and sleep there and pretend to be children uh, or, or, you know, put their toys on the front of a vehicle. Uh, here's, here's another one where the Israelis have, I don't, I don't know, they've taken some, some dresses, they basically rummaged through people's homes and, and stolen uh, girls' or women's clothes and put them on. And once again, you know, there's a difference if, if you or I, we do that for fun. Uh, and and what, there's a difference between that and going to, uh, you know, someone's home in another country that you have bombed and then stealing their clothes and posing with their, with their uh, you know, their personal face. I mean, this, this, these are worlds apart. You know, there's a difference between boys, you know, just uh, having fun and, 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 and war crimes. Uh, you, you have to understand this. It's not just like, oh, they're having fun or something. No, no, no. This, this is really sick and serious. You have to understand that. And, and not to mention the fact that it's unbecoming of a professional army. I mean, not, not that we were, you know, under any illusion that the Israelis constitute a professional army in the first place. But nevertheless, if you were to make the assertion or, 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 or the, or, or the uh, you know, put forward the hypothesis that the Israelis are a professional army, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, no, absolutely not. And they began as terrorists. Never forget this. The Israeli armed forces began as terrorist organizations like the Haganah, literal terrorists, okay? I'm not, I'm not, it's not me saying that, it's the British government. So, here, more of these photos where they're, they're you know, uh, posing with women's uh, makeup and clothes and, and, you know, attire and accessories. Uh, it's, it's truly endless. I mean, I, I, I'm, I don't know why I'm shocked, but, but yeah, it, it's, it's truly endless. Here, here's another one. Just look at the subtitles, honestly, what are you saying? Okay. <laughs> הם הומלסים, הומלסים, אנחנו נאמלל אתכם. אנחנו נראה לכם מה זה מי שולט פה. אתם תסבלו על כל שנייה על מה שעשיתם לנו. לילדים שלנו, לנשים שלנו, לגברים. אתם תמותו. לא, אין לכם לאן לחזור, אתם הומלסים, הומלסים אתם! בוקר אחרון שלנו בעזה, אפשר לראות... Well, the, uh, the Court of Justice and International Criminal Court, thank you for this submission. Uh, here's another one. Well, here's a grocery store that they're looting. <laughs> He's, he's pretending it's a, he's making fun of the the Muslim faith also, you know. <laughs> he, he, was, he was pretending it's a prayer rug and then kicking it aside. And, and I want you to remember these things because it's not just the looting. It's also the, the you know, th there's a difference between a bunch of soldiers uh, going into a shop and, and, and stealing food because they're hungry uh, and, and then filming themselves and just like happily destroying everything in the shop and, and you know, swearing. And come on, you, you know, I don't need to explain this to you. You, you surely understand the difference. Uh, because there's no, ex there's no possible explanation for this other than the Israeli army is a terrorist organization. It always has been since its inception. They have not changed since the days of the Irgun, the Lehi, or the Stern Gang, and the Haganah. They are still those terrorist groups today. They have not changed. 
in, in any way whatsoever. They, they, they would happily uh, kill British citizens and American citizens if, if they uh, need to. And we saw that they did that in the King David Hotel and the USS Liberty. And they happily kill Arabs today, just as they did 75 years ago. And as a matter of fact, even before 1948. Th this is really just disgusting, evil behavior. There's no other way to put it. There's no, um, there's no excuse for this. Here, it, 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 there's more. You know, they're, they're even admitting it themselves, right? Uh, uh, aside from the fact that they're filming it, they're, they're literally using that word. Here, here's another... Uh, by the way, I have to thank Eunice for putting this thread together. Forgive me, I, I forgot to mention his name. I, I was so focused on the, 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 the you know, atrocities. Um, let, let me show you this... Uh, these images that they've they've uh, filmed here, they've, they've written "fuck Gaza." Uh, this is on eighth of January. Um, they're filming themselves, you know, with houses burning in the background, burning people's homes, and then saying houses are burning by mistake. You know, basically it, it, a lot of sarcasm, like "oh, can't go to school anymore." They're, but they're, they're mocking Palestinians. And here's the same thing. Um, here's a, there's a, an Israeli YouTube channel also uh, that uploads, where Israelis upload videos of themselves burning Palestinians' homes in Gaza. Uh, here they're also going through people's um, uh, things, their belongings. Their, I, I showed you this photo, but there, there are more. So, yeah, there are more photos here where they're going through women's uh, lingerie, you know, uh, on the bed uh, and their closets. You know, the Israelis, what they'll say, which, which is funny, is they'll, they'll, they'll pretend like, oh, well, we were uh, conducting searches. F first of all, no one invited you to conduct searches. You have no right to conduct searches. You, you are trespassing you're an invader an invader in the true sense of the term and then on top of that like even even if you buy this rubbish about oh they're searching for weapons uh what do you why are you photographing yourself with women's clothes and then putting these captions they, I, i'm saying these things i know that they're obvious but i'm saying them because no matter how you look at this through any possible explanation any possible justification there is none it just doesn't exist Here, look at this, they're throwing money on, on people that they blindfolded. I should remind you that it is, it is a, a violation, it's a war crime to blindfold prisoners. I know the Americans want you to think that this is okay um, uh, because they, they do it in movies, but it, it, it's forbidden. You, you're not allowed to blindfold prisoners. It, this is shit that Nazis did, literally, in World War II. You can't blindfold them. Because not, not, not only is it, is it forbidden, it also sim it, 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 um, can simulate or have the effect of simulating a mock execution. So you, you, it's forbidden, absolutely forbidden to blindfold or put a bag on someone's head when you've detained them. I don't care what anyone says, that's the law. And here you can see that the Israelis are doing it and then throwing money at the, uh, at, at the, uh, the hostages they've taken. I'm pretty sure that, that that was Yiddish at the end. Sei gesund, like, like be well in German. Yeah, look, here they are throwing in grenades at people's... Um... I, don't, I don't know if that's at the same people or not, but I, I don't want to know, frankly. But just, just, you know, horrible stuff. Um, and here you can see them. They've, they've gone into um, an, a facility that it belongs to the United Nations, to UNRWA, a medical clinic. And uh, they've basically put, you know, explosives inside the, the, the place. They've, they've uh, you know, here, here you can see they've wired it with explosives for no reason. You know, it's just like, oh, it, it, it's, a, it's a structure in Gaza. Blow it up. And, you know... I, I wish this were just one image or one case, then we could have a debate about whether it's real or not. The problem is that Gaza has been flattened 
uh, a good chunk of Gaza has been flattened. So yes, we know for a fact the Israelis do practice and implement a policy of, of mass destruction, truly mass destruction in the full sense of the, uh, uh, of the term. So, you know, th these are just some more videos, some more evidence of how sick the Israelis are. I, I, there, there are not enough words in the English language, uh, uh, you know, that can, that can uh, adequately encapsulate how fucking depraved and sick these people are in the head. Uh, again, I'm, I, I don't think that we should look at this from the, the, the point of view that, well, you know, they've been indoctrinated with Zionism and therefore they don't know what they're doing. No, I'm, I'm sorry. They know exactly what they're doing. Uh, they are bastards. They're just bastards. There's, there's no other way around it. They're fucking bastards. And whatever, uh, uh, you know, whatever damage or suffering they claim to have incurred, uh, uh, you know, or, or, or suffered on October 7th is surpassed by this uh, 10, 50, 100, 1,000 fold, right? We, we have surpassed this a long, long, long time ago from the first day already. And not to mention that you are counting from October 7th when you enter this mind frame. What about the 75 years before that? The Israelis have been behaving like this for 75 years. And, and again, even before 48, they've been behaving like this since... It's a bunch of European Jews that have been pushed out of Europe with the help of, of uh, European countries, right? Who, who, they, the, who they themselves are anti-Semitic and actually don't want Jews in Europe, which is why they support Israel. It's, so the Israelis are... The, the Israeli army, it's a bunch of European Jews who have been, you know, uh, pushed out of Europe and, and uh, ca you know, they come, they come to Palestine and have been stealing and robbing and killing people uh, since, since the beginning, since the very beginning. How do, you, how do you think hundreds of thousands of Palestinians were displaced? You, it's, it, ta you know, it takes a lot of fear to, to make hundreds of thousands of people just get up and leave their homes. It's because they're terrorized, literally terrorized. Right? So the Israelis have been implementing this policy since the beginning. It's just that now, we, with the advent of the internet, with the advent of mobile phones and, and um, social media, it's, it's much easier for us to see what's happening uh, uh, on the scale that it's happening. And I bet you that it's even worse than what we see, without question. But not only the scale of it, but actually as it's happening, while it's happening, on the ground. And, and this is unprecedented with any genocide in history. And, you know, the Israelis can, can moan as much as they like. They can say, oh, it's not a genocide. I don't give a fuck if you call it, uh, you know, chicken masala or you call it potato salad. I really don't give a fuck. This behavior is evil. You people are fucking evil. There's something wrong with you. you the, if you're a Zionist, you are evil. You're, you're sick. You, you're fucked up in your head. You don't have any humanity. You, you, you have no compassion. You have no sympathy. You have no morals. You are a fucking evil human being. And... and the, the, the mountain of evidence. I mean, Jesus Christ, how many videos do I have to show you? Is one not enough? Are 10 not enough? 50? What, what's the threshold for you to fucking, you know, get this through your, your head? You, you can't reason with Zionists. They're just evil bastards. That's all. They're, it's like Nazis. You can't reason with fucking Nazis because they're Nazis. And, and once again, I, I elect that we, we replace, as it's used colloquially in the English language, the word, the term Nazi with Israeli or Zionist, because it, it, the, the evil has, has surpassed the Nazis. I mean, in any factor, any, any way you want to look at it, the rate of starving civilians, guess what? The Israelis have surpassed anyone in history at, at the rate of starvation inside of Gaza. Uh, the proportion of civilians killed, they've surpassed any conflict in the 20th century, including World War I or World War II. The, any metric you look at, uh, you know, they, they have actually managed to do worse. Uh, the number of atrocities captured willingly by the soldiers themselves and, and shared, they've surpassed it. I mean, it, it's fucking amazing, really. It's like they're doing it on purpose. They just want to be worse than, than any army in history or any uh, uh, force in history. They don't even deserve to be called an army because they're a bunch of ragtag uh, fucking terrorists from, from Eastern Europe. That's all they are. And, and, you know, the fact that they got a bunch of Arab Jews to move to Israel, which they forced, they coerced them, by the way, and they got the U.S. to do that, doesn't change the fact that they're still terrorists. I don't care if you got black people, which they do. I don't care if you got Americans in the, in the army. You're still terrorists. It, does, it doesn't change anything. The behavior is still rampant. It's, it's systematic. It's widespread. It's, it's a, a disgusting pervert culture, an evil culture. And here's the difference. Everything they say about Hamas... Where is the fucking proof? I, I haven't seen one fucking video to this day of anything they claim about Hamas. But on the, on the other hand, every day you've got videos of Israelis themselves willingly sharing this on social media. It's unbelievable. We, we come back to the culture of, of projection or the phenomenon of projection. Everything Israelis do, they accuse others of doing. Every single itty bitty thing. It's unbelievable.
I'll get more, more into detail about that in a second when we talk about this uh, rape hoax. I, before I, I, I go into that, I want to show you the, the uh, starvation, uh, which, is, which is, again, I know I did a video on this already, but, uh, uh, you, you know, it's... So, give me a second to switch here. So, like I said, I, the other day, I, I, I showed you an hour's worth of footage of, of how Palestinians are starving. They're having to make uh, food out of animal feed and all these things. It's, it's really horrific. Um, you know, it, but, but since then, what, what's happened is that you've had a, a, a few, you know, packages that have been uh, dropped by air um, of, of aid, right? Supposed aid. And what I find so incredible about this is that you have um, the, the uh, you know, the Americans pretending that they, they, they give enough of a crap to provide Palestinians with aid while they're killing them. You know, it's like, I'm gonna, uh, you know, I'm gonna give you, um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna uh, give you an aspirin, but then shoot you in the head. This, this is what, these, what the Americans are doing. They, they are the ones providing the bombs that are being dropped on Gaza, and then they send a bunch of crackers or, or, or flour, you know. And, and, and the worst part is that it doesn't even... It doesn't even reach the Palestinians because they're getting massacred when they try to go get the aid. That's when the Israelis are driving in the trucks, but the Americans that are dropping it by air, or the Jordanians even. I'll show you the the uh, the king. <laughs> you know, he got he went he got out of his he got off his his ass for a second to go drop some some uh, um, you know some aid. Look, at, I'll show you the video. It's, it's it's ridiculous, really. It's it's honestly it's ridiculous. Um, and, and, and the worst part is that it doesn't even fall in, it doesn't even reach people in Gaza. It, it ends up falling in the, in the sea. It's the, the aid that they're, they're going through all this effort of delivering to Palestinians is falling into the sea. Here's the uh, Jordanian king, uh, King Abdullah who, the second, who again, I should remind you, is a, is a, is a colonel in the British army. Um, and... Uh, You know, I have to say a few things. Um, okay, the fact that he's uh, a colonel in the British Army, I mean, yeah, that, that doesn't, you know, it's not, it's not necessarily the hallmark of evil or something like that. No, but my point with, why, why am I telling you this, this information is because if you look at, um, uh, you look at Abdullah, you look at the Egyptian president, Sisi, they, these are people that have been brought up and raised in the West. And, and when I say that, I don't mean that in the sense they were born there and they went to school there and then, then that's it. No, I mean that they've been groomed by the security state and, and the, um, the Zionists so that they go back to their countries and then they govern their countries in a way that suits the Israelis. They've been groomed by Zionists. Do you understand the, 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 the meaning here? They, their, pol their political ambitions uh, uh, extend as far as Israel will allow them to. Right? This is what you have to understand. So, so, you know, it's not just that he is, he is, um, uh, uh, I mean, you know, my question is, where was he four months ago? Where was he a year ago? Okay, it's, you know, if, if I were him, great. I'd also suit up in a uniform and get in the plane and drop the aid myself. Wonderful. But where were you four months ago, six months ago, six years ago? What were you doing? What were you waiting for? So what's happening right now, you have to understand this is a PR stunt. What's happening is that the Israelis, they're feeling the heat. From, from all of this backlash against them internationally. Although, again, they have no shame, so are they really? Uh, but nevertheless, the, 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 the Americans, the Egyptians, the Jordanians, the Israelis have put together a short PR stunt where each one has brought in a little bit of aid, right? L look at what I'm explaining to you. Look at the timeline. In the last week, um, we had this airdrop here. And again, this was not just from Egypt. It was also from uh, UAE and France, I think. Yeah. And then 
you had the Israelis bringing in the aid, which turned into the flower massacre because, because is, Zionists are unhinged and, and they just like to shoot Palestinians. Uh, and then you have the Americans also dropping a few, you know, um, uh, air, uh, conducting a few airdrops. Why all of this at the same time? Why, why, for example, were the Jordanians not doing airdrops two months ago or the Americans doing two months ago? This is a concerted, coordinated effort. And it, it's being done to kind of, uh, uh, you know, take the spotlight off of the crimes that they're committing and, and make it look like, oh, look, we're so generous. We're offering the people that we're butchering aid, you know? Oh, you, your leg got blown off. Here's a cracker. You want some chocolate? Oh, you're going to die in a day. I mean, and, and, and the worst part, it's so cheap. It, it's such a cheap, pathetic stunt because the aid is not even reaching Gazans, number one, because the Israelis massacre them, or two, the, the packages fall in the sea. But also, look, look at this, honestly. I have to show you the video because you're not going to believe it. Just look, look at it falling into the sea, please. Look at that. What's the big deal? They should just go around this and, and, and get it. I mean, are you are you serious? Do you know how fucking heavy that thing is? It if you if you held on to it, it would li literally drown you because of how heavy it is. Not only that, that's that's not that's the least of your worries. The Israelis won't even allow Palestinians to go into the sea, right? It was already like this before October sixth, uh, before October seventh on the sixth, because of the siege since two thousand seven. So you know, uh, if you're a fisherman in Gaza, good luck trying to get trying to fish. You know, the, the waters, you, you've got such a small, confined space. It's been overfished. There's no fish left anymore today. And, and not only that, but, you know, the, the Israelis can pick you off even if you're on the beach, like the boys I was talking about earlier, which was a huge, huge story at the time, you know? I, I mean, look, I haven't forgotten about it. Many people haven't. So, you know, the idea that, oh, you can go out and get it, A, it's heavy, two, the Israelis might kill you. So, no, this is this is embarrassing especially that it's not just some random person who dropped the damn thing this is supposed to be a professional army they can't they they, they know how to deliver weapons to israel but they can't drop a bunch of fucking cornflakes <laughs> it's humiliating also it's humiliating that palestinians have to go out and swim after it like like you know it, it, it it's so it, i mean for me, for me, I don't, I don't view the Palestinians as being or having been humiliated. Not, not at all. But what they are doing, their behavior, it, it is intended to be humiliating. And ironically, who ends up really being humiliated by this? It's the countries dropping the aid and committing the massacre at the same time. It's so bad. I want to show you a tweet. You're going to laugh at this because it's really funny. This is... <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. This is uh, Ford. Do you guys remember the former uh, U.S. ambassador to Syria? The one who, uh, you know, who helped uh, with, the, with the coup or the attempted coup against um, uh, Bashar al-Assad. Yeah, this guy. Look what he had to say on Twitter about this. He said, I've seen Israel humiliate previous U.S. administrations. But aside from the murderous 1967 Israeli airstrike against the U.S. Navy ship Liberty. Thank you. Uh, now forcing the United States to do airdrops of aid to Gaza as if the U.S. is no better than Egypt and Jordan is Israel's worst humiliation of the United States I've ever seen. Yes, you're absolutely correct. I mean, the fact you're committing genocide is perhaps the, the, the more egregious and, and, and uh, flagrant transgression at hand. But nevertheless, I'll give you, I'll give you, a, uh, you know, a thumbs up at, uh, you know, for this observation. Yeah, it's humiliating. Because who do, you, who do you think is making these? It's the Israelis that won't let the Americans do that. You might be thinking, well, how is that possible? It's the United States that gives aid to Israel. And no, no, no. You, you got everything's backward, man. You, if you think that the U.S. is running the show here 100%, you don't know what you're talking about. Of course, it, the U.S. is running it to some extent. But in, listen, the Israelis put themselves first. What, what did he just talk about? What did I just talk about? What have I talked about to you a million times? The Israelis bombed a U.S. Navy ship on purpose. When, when, when push comes to shove, the Israelis will, will absolutely, absolutely shove Americans into harm's way. This is what you people don't understand. There's no allies with the Israelis. Just like, you know, you, you, when you dance with the devil, uh, he's, he's the one picking the tune. That's how it is. So you've got all these aid trucks. All these aid trucks, it's, I mean, it's not just aid, it's just basic necessities that have to come to Gaza either way, that have been stuck at, stuck at the border 
for for months, months now. And, and remember, every single day, you need to usually get 500 trucks into Gaza every day. And that's before October 7th. And I mean, when we say before October 7th, again, it's not like it was that much better. It's still a siege. That's the whole, pro the whole problem is that you're dependent on, on external aid. That's how they want. That's how the Israelis want Gaza to be. They want it to be under control so they can cut off the aid as they have done right before our very eyes at a moment's notice, at a, uh, you know, um, on a whim. So 500 trucks and, and, you know, at best, you maybe had 18 trucks coming in. The Israelis will claim it was 30. This is during the flower massacre just two days ago. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, this is not a way to live. You cannot live at the mercy of a bunch of psychotic Zionists. I'm, I'm not having it. Whether they're American or they're Saudi or they're Israeli, I really don't care. You cannot be living. You cannot, you know, conduct business and, and your affairs and, and live, simply live as a human being with, you know, your life in their hands. This is, uh, this is ridiculous. I mean, just as a matter of sovereignty, never mind the fact that we're talking about Zionists who are psychotic, just as a matter of sovereignty, how can you... Uh, accept that you are dependent on on the you know the whims of a foreign uh, entity. This is outrageous. Look at this. You've got remember you've got how many people in Gaza? About two point three million. Half of them are children, and they're starving. They've been starving since the beginning, right? Three planes um, dropped sixty six bundles containing thirty eight thousand meals into Gaza. Now, you do the math. Once again, I, I put this to you. One of you can do it in the comments. What percentage of that is, uh, you know, of that Gazan population is going to eat? You've got 2.3 million people and 38,000 meals that have been dropped in. And that's just once. That's if you just give every person within the, the capacity one meal. It's gone in, 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 you know, the blink of an eye. What about, what about in two hours? What about the rest of the people that didn't eat? This is a joke. This is a fucking insult. Here, let me play this clip from Glenn Greenwald, uh, which is very good. Here is an Irish nurse, I believe she's Irish, who works with one of these aid organizations. And I just want you to listen to what she said, having been to Gaza, having all kinds of colleagues in Gaza that she's worked with, a longtime healthcare workers and others, about the situation in Gaza. Here's what she has to say. Just explain first why viewers, why aid isn't being allowed in. Where is the aid? It's very simple. It's because the Israeli military won't let it in. We could end this starvation tomorrow very simply if they would just let us have access to people there, but, but it's not being allowed. This is what they said on the 7th of October. Nothing will go in, and, and so it remains the case. And for people in the north of Gaza, it's even worse because no food is reaching them anymore. And so my own staff, my own colleague, Abir, has been eating animal feed, and horrifyingly... The food that they were eating, which is food for horse and donkeys, is now running out, and now they're eating bird seed. The statistics also tell their own story. One in six children under the age of two in the north of Gaza are now acutely malnourished. This is the fastest decline in a population's nutrition status ever recorded, and what that means is that children are being starved at the fastest rate the world has ever seen. And we could finish it tomorrow. We could save them all, but we're not being able to. I mean, I presume you heard in process of what she said. She said that children are being starved at the fastest rate we have ever seen. And unless you want to just dismiss every single healthcare worker, every dedicated aid organization as somehow propagandistic against Israel, all willing to lie collectively for some reason, I know it's kind of a human impulse to believe that human suffering and humanitarian catastrophe on this scale probably isn't happening. It's a comforting belief to convince ourselves or lure ourselves into accepting, the evidence is just overwhelming. It's overwhelming. If you just listen to any of the people who have been to Gaza, who have colleagues there, everything they're describing is very uniform. The data proves it. Neutral aid organizations are all saying the same thing, that this is a catastrophe on a scale unlike the, anything they've ever seen. It's really, it's really scandalous. Honestly, it's, it's, it's scandalous beyond belief. I mean, she said that children are starving at, a, at an unprecedented rate, right? Those are the words she said. Children are being starved at the fastest rate the world has ever seen. I mean, how, how do you wrap your brain around that? How do you wrap your mind around that? It, it's, it, it's impossible. I, I, I still don't even grasp fully what she's saying because it just, it's so huge. It's so big. 
but it's real. You, I mean, we we see it, and and, and I don't I don't need statistics. You know, but I, I'll just remind you. Even if this were not the case, let us let us argue hypothetically that uh, oh, it's only a quarter of the people. Are you okay with starving a quarter million people? Like what you know what. what this is not an issue of numbers or percentages. It's the principle. And on top of everything, to make things worse, it's, it's, it's absolute. It's everyone in Gaza. It's every single person who is subjected to the same fate. Do you, do you understand how bad this is? You know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's truly incredible. It's truly, truly horrific. And, and, and this is exactly what uh, I wanted to, to basically say is that, you know, um, on Thursdays, the Americans are <laughs> delivering bombs and, and, you know, to Gaza. And then on Fridays, they're uh, delivering uh, candy. You know, it's funny because this is not just in Gaza. When I think of how the, they, they would do this uh, winning hearts and minds thing uh, in Vietnam and Afghanistan, you know, it's like throwing candy at people. Uh, like they're a bunch of, you know, like you're, you're, you're throwing bird seed at, at a bunch of chickens. Um, I mean, it's just, it's, it's degrading. It's really degrading. Um, the problem is that you you know that when people are starving, they just they they you just want a meal, man. You don't care who who gave you the meal or how it came. But again, we're not even talking about everyone being fed. They're not being fed. It's not enough. Uh, you know, if 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 there was enough aid coming in, this is already, this would be half a problem. Uh, it wouldn't excuse the genocide in any capacity, obviously, obviously. But you know, uh, you have to remember that even people who are not starving to death, but who are, for example malnourished it's, it's much harder to if you, you your leg uh you know got amputated or you're fighting an infection if you have cholera you can't fight off the infection yeah uh, you can't fight off a fever when you're malnourished right uh or or fight off any other uh, uh array of diseases when you're malnourished and and you're not um uh you know there's no clean water so so even before october 7th the the, the 90 i think it's 93 percent. it was not uh, certainly over 90 percent over 90% of the water in Gaza was undrinkable before October 7th. So you, you see how the Israelis, you know, they, they, they steal all these resources from Palestine and then they, they like throw crumbs back at the, um, at the Palestinians, which is a hallmark feature of colonialism. It's just like, you know, if you're looking at the British in, 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 in uh, uh, Iran or Persia, um, you know, like stealing all of this oil and then giving a little bit back um, and then, of course, making the Iranians pay taxes on their own oil uh, or, or the same thing in India, you know, building railways and then making the Indians pay for the railways themselves. Except that, you know, we're, we're talking uh, about about, um, uh, you know, 75 years of this uh, and it, it's documented today better than ever because of the advent of technology. Um, it's genocide on an un unforeseen scale it's really something devilish like if, if, if you were if you were to, to to attribute this word to anything in the world right now devilish or evil I, you know unequivocally it would be this well, there, there is simply nothing else that fits this description better you know uh, uh, more, more adequately there, there just isn't so you know um again i i, I know the israelis want to pro project an image of being you know like somehow uh, uh, civilized or something, but their behavior indicates otherwise. And I want to show you some, some of the photos. Again, this is very, very distressing. Um, but, you know... <sighs> People are starving. Look. You know, I, I told you this last time. I, I, I told you this last time, and I'm going to say it again because it, of how, how, how horrific these images are. And, and again, um, it, it warrants repeating. When I, when I first saw the images, um, the, the, the first thing I thought of is that, that image from the, um, from the Armenian genocide. There's, there's that boy who, who, who has been starved to a skeleton by the Turks, by the Ottomans. And... Um, uh, he, he, he's like, you know, the, the sun is in his eyes or something and he, he can't really, uh, he's, he's, he's frowning a bit, but you know, this, this is what it reminds me of, right? Uh, re really just horrific stuff. I don't know if I can pull up the, the photo up uh, right now, but, um, it, it, ironically, the, you know, the Israelis who, who, uh, who, uh, constantly bring up the Holocaust in, in a, in a very, uh, dishonest manner. 
so that they can yeah here, here's the the image again this is from the armenian genocide i'll get i'll come back to the holocaust in a second but this is when i saw this 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 person in gaza this is what they reminded me of on the left from the armenian genocide for, at the hands of the turks the ottoman turks and uh their their ally germany in 1915 1.5 million armenians killed so you know that that that's what it reminded me of and you know the, the israelis constantly bring up the holocaust and if you go and you watch what the russians filmed when they liberated the concentration camps you'll find very, very similar images um and i just don't understand how how the israelis who constantly uh, say they're traumatized by the holocaust and and that they are the jewish state and therefore they get they get to monopolize the holocaust why they would go and inflict a very similar fate on on anyone else for any reason i i i shouldn't have to remind you you know uh, under the genocide convention there is no excuse for genocide even if someone commits genocide against you hypothetically you can't go and commit genocide against them it's just absolutely for completely forbidden it's an absolute a legal absolute so you know it's it's just it just goes to show you once again how how hypocritical and dishonest the israelis are the zionists because they 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 don't give a crap about the holocaust that's that's just political milk for them to 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 use you know to shut people up like oh how dare, how dare you accuse us of genocide we suffered a genocide i'm sorry mate the fucking photos say otherwise the videos that keep coming out every day say otherwise and need i you know need i remind you there are many holocaust survivors who are they're they're losing their goddamn minds at what's happening in gaza they 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 want nothing to do with israel you know and this is even before uh, uh, the, this current episode they 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 hate israel you know because it does everything that the nazis did and worse by 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 these metrics now i mean like literally quantifiably worse it's not an opinion you can literally measure it as as a science uh, and 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 show this this is the case it's shocking and whatever we know whatever we have as as figures and statistics by the time it's already been written down and recorded and 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 uh you know um put together it's already worse on the ground in reality it's already worse and i and there was someone from the un who was saying that earlier i don't know if i'll be able to pull up their speech quickly but uh um that that was that was basically their their uh their their point you know in any case, it was it was from um, I think it was from Ocha. I don't remember, but he, that's the exact point he made. Is that by the time we have the statistics at the UN or any NGO has the statistics, it's already worse on the ground, and and what we're seeing now is already horrific. Uh, you know, um, and it, it, what's what's crazy is that everything I'm I've been talking uh, uh, about to you in the last twenty minutes is is just about starvation. Like, for, you know, forget the bombs. Which, which are already their own dimension of the war, their own beast. This, this, is, this is really something else, you know. So the, the, the genocide is compounded by other factors. If you, if you consider the lack of medicine, this is another one. Uh, the lack of water, this is another one. Lack of refuge, all of these things. It's like several genocides on top of each other, you know. Because to, to be hungry is already bad enough. You can, you can commit a genocide just, just by starving people. And that's happening. You can also commit a genocide just by bombing people. That's also happening. You can commit genocide by, de by denying people life-saving medication. It's also happening. It, it, it's, it's so, so sick. Uh, you know, th th there's no recovering from this for Israel. And nor should there be. You know, over my, over my dead fucking body. Over my dead body. There, th there's no coming back from this for Israel. There shouldn't have any uh, coming back uh, for, uh, since the Nakba. But we're, we're around. We're alive right now to see this. And talk about it and witness it and 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 bear witness to, to to these horrific things as they're happening so you know we we bear an even greater responsibility because we weren't alive back then we are alive now and and you know there's no no coming back from this i don't care if they have to run off and live on the moon i don't give a shit there can be no rehabilitation of israel ever 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 if there even was one to begin with and i and i'll put this to you the the uh, israelis the zionists and their friends in the west we're trying to say that, well, you know, Bashar al-Assad, he shouldn't be rehabilitated. Why are, they, why are they allowing Syria back into the Arab community, uh, into the Arab League? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, what, the, what does Bashar al-Assad even compare when it, uh, to when it comes to this? I mean, anything that he has supposedly done, and we know that they lied a lot about Syria, is dwarfed, is completely, utterly, and unequivocally dwarfed by the Israelis' behavior. It, it, it does not even come close. And this is, this is just counting from, from the last four months. If we counted the last 75 years, we come to the same fucking conclusion. 
So, you know, they, they wanted to, to basically turn Syria into a pariah, Iran into a pariah. They wanted Venezuela and Korea and Nicaragua and Cuba to become pariah states. Jesus Christ. I mean, what have, what have these countries done that, that even bears any resemblance to this? Nothing, literally nothing. It just doesn't exist. And, and if they're, so if you're going to call them pariahs, what the fuck does that make Israel then? No, I'm sorry. Zionism is a curse. It's a cancer. You have to understand this. There's a reason Britain and France came and cut up Syria into little pieces and then they stuck Israel in the middle. It's, it's not some like random coincidence. You know, they did it on purpose because of its strategic location, because Palestine is connect, you know, connects Africa to, to uh, Asia and then uh, those two to Europe as well. It's a crossroads, right? It, it's geostrategic. It's, it's, it's not only geostrategic, but historical, the historical importance of the region, the Fertile Crescent, Mesopotamia, the, the advent of Islam, Christianity, Judaism. It, 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 every metric, every domain and field that you could possibly think of, I mean, it, it's, it's uh, the crown jewel of the world, right? It's always been the center of politics, Syria. So they carved it up and then they said, oh, well, this is Lebanon. That's going to be Jordan. This is Iraq. Here's a piece to Turkey. Uh, here's a, a Palestine. Oh, and guess what? We're going to stick Israel here. And Israel is an anomaly. It has nothing to do with the rest of the countries here. You know, and it's not like they're Arab Jews. If the, the Arab Jews are already living there. There's no problem. They're literally already there, right? So who are these, who, who are these Israelis? They're Europeans. They, they came and brought these Europeans here, stuck them there on purpose, so it's an outpost. And, and you know, th it has to be dismantled. I'm, so, I'm sorry, man. This behavior, it, any country, any, any country that behaves like this would have been bombed uh, uh, into oblivion by now, by the West. It, it, they, they would have found every excuse in the world to go and do it. And they have done this over far less in the past. They've done it to Iraq. They've done it to Syria, to Libya, to Somalia, to Sudan. You know, you name it, they've done it. To Vietnam, they always find an excuse. We have to contain communism, Al-Qaeda, you know, just whatever they want. And, and, and they, they claim there's such a threat, there's such a, a huge threat that this, this, this crusade has to be undertaken. I'm sorry, uh, you know, if, if you're ever going to argue in favor of, of you know, uh, uh, intervention, they love using this word intervention when it's actually imperialism. But if you're ever going to argue for the dismantling of a country the way Nazi Germany was dismantled, then Israel fits the bill without question. Without question. There is no question about this. And I should remind you that in 1945, the biggest security threat in Britain after the Nazis had already been defeated were the fucking Israelis. The fucking Israelis. Because they were putting bombs inside of London. They were putting bombs all over the place. Government buildings. They were, they were mailing letter bombs. They invented the shoe bomb. They were trying to kill as many British politicians and citizens and officials as they could. It, can, you, can you imagine? If you go, you can go online and read the files from MI5, the internal security files, and you can see for yourself. You don't have to take my word for it. Go, go and look at that. So from the very beginning, they have been nothing but a menace. They should be given no quarter. They, no quarter whatsoever. Zionism is a fucking cancer that was planted by the West in the Middle East. It is a disease. It is something completely unnecessary. Judaism has existed for thousands of years without Zionism. So there, there, there does, there's no reason for these two things to be mixed together whatsoever. Jewish schools, Jewish people, Jewish culture have existed all over the world and have existed in the Middle East with Arabs, with, with Muslims, with Christians, without any issue. It's only the Europeans that come in and start creating, well, you know, we're going to make crusaders out of the Christians and we'll make uh, Zionists out of the Jews and we'll make ISIS and Al-Qaeda out of the Muslims and use them to, you know, for political games. Th this is imperialism. It's European bullshit. It, ha it has no reason for being, okay? The, the, you, Judaism and Zionism do not have to be mixed into one. Judaism can exist peacefully and, and, and properly and has done for eons without Zionism. So there's no, absolutely no argument for Zionism to exist unless you're a psychotic, deranged, genocidal maniac uh, who, who thinks it's okay to, you know, wipe out uh, 30,000 people in four months and then just keep going for 75 years. Sorry. No. Just, we're not having it. We're not, we're not having it. One of you, uh, I think this was Soapbox Girl, said, great to see you wearing your, your, um, Hold on, I, it, it mirrors, I get mixed up. Great to see you, <laughs> see you wearing your workers' party badge. Of course, how could I not? How could I not? I mean, um, I'm, I'm very happy for George. I'm, I'm very, very happy. And I'm so happy he, he ran, um, you know, uh, not as an independent, but in the, independent of the Labour Party. Of course, he, he ran as part of the workers' party. But that's the thing, right? I, 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 maybe I didn't point this out earlier in my video, but to me it's obvious, is that 
the Labour Party, you know, uh, in its name, you would think it's, it's pro-worker or it's represented by workers. Uh, it, 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 absolutely not. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's nothing to do with, with, with what you, you might have called it 100 years ago or, you know, in, it, it, during its, its, at its inception. So the alternative was, well, you have to have a workers' party of Great Britain, and, and this is the alternative. And, and it's actually focused on leftist things. It's, it's actually focused on anti-imperialism. It, it's anti-Zionist. It says it in the, in the program. It's not, you know, they've done, they don't mince words or, or, um, or try to hide anything, and, and, and that's what I like. And, that, and I know why George ran as uh, um, uh, uh, under the workers' party, and I, and I know why that's, that's why there's so many lovely people in the workers' party. All of them are pro-Assange, all of them are pro-Palestine, all of them understand the games they played with Syria. They all get it. Everybody gets it. That's why, that's why I, love, I, I, I love you guys, and um, uh, uh, I, I was very proud when you bestowed this on, uh, upon me and uh, made me an honorary member, so I thank you for that very much. <laughs> uh, um, we also have another one here from... Uh, from Rev, who says, stay strong, brother. Rob from Tasmania. Well, thank you very much. And we have another one from a Gypsy Cruiser, who says, eliminate Israel from Palestine. Well, you know, I'll, uh, I'll do you one better, because here, here, this is the best way to maybe uh, um, answer Zionists if you have the misfortune of having to. But um, you, could, you can just say that you support Israel, but not in Palestine. You know, you, you can go make Israel uh, somewhere else, but not in Palestine. All these countries that love Zionism, let them give a chunk of their, their territory to the, to the Israelis, right? I, I think that's only fair. Since America loves Zionism so much, let them give Texas or something to the Israelis. Maybe Germany, who actually, you know, uh, because they, the Israelis like to claim they're the Jewish state. Okay, well, you know, you paid reparations to them for, for the Holocaust. Why not give them land as reparations so they leave the Palestinians the fuck alone and you actually pay for what you did? You know, these are just some ideas. <laughs> Ophelia says, free Palestine, fuck Israel, that's all. Well, I couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you all very much. We also have got some uh, on Rockfin. We, we have one from Stargazer. Thank you very much uh, for your donations. And we have one uh, from Laura who says, Richie, uh, Richard deserves a tip for this rant. <laughs> I don't know which one, but I think I have an idea. Uh, they, they sent me over the edge, so in any, in any case. Um, no, it, it, it's... Uh, it's difficult not to swear, man. It's really difficult. They, they, it, it's, it's incredible. I'm gonna, I, I've still got some things to show you that are going to blow your abs, I mean, blow your mind. Re really, you think that you've heard it all. You haven't heard it all. It gets worse. The rabbit hole goes, goes even deeper. It's so, so horrific how, how much they lie, the Zionists. It's, it's really something disgusting. Um, I first, uh, I'm much obliged to Jesse uh, and to Pamela for joining on Patreon. I, I will play them a crab dance momentarily. Thank you also for the donation from Daniel, who says, keep up the good work, Richard. Let's collaborate soon. Thank you, Daniel. And there's one from Justin that's pending. And I think uh, Justin must have said a bad word in his PayPal donation, because if you say Palestine or Syria, they will actually take the donation aside, like you know, they're inspecting a truck or something. <laughs> I'm, I'm not joking. I, uh, they, they actually do that. I, it's, it's silly. Um, but in any case, I, I thank all of you for donating on, on, uh, Rumble, on PayPal, and on Patreon. Once again, I'm streaming on YouTube, but I have to remind you guys that they demonetize the channel. So if you're able to th throw a few bucks my way, maybe one pound a month or a two dollar donation right now, please consider doing it. It helps me recoup all the money that I've been losing because YouTube was my main thing. You know, it was independent. I built it up myself. And then they, they basically, they're punishing me because I, you know, didn't say the right things about October 7th. And I'm still not going to say them. You'll see them in a minute. Um, so in any case, uh, thank, thank you guys uh, for, for all your help. And again, if you're on YouTube, I have to ask you, please make an account on Rumble. Uh, one of you was asking for a guide. I'll upload a video of that uh, just in case it's not clear. But here's the, uh, the address. It's rumble.com slash Richard Medhurst. You just make an account. It's, it's just like signing up on YouTube. It's completely free. Please make one and subscribe because we got 200,000 people on YouTube, but we only got, you know, what is it? 25,000 on, 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 uh, on Rumble. I need you guys to help me lift up the, the numbers. Please, guys, I'm counting on you. I really am. I really am counting on you. You know, it, we, it hasn't gone up. So I need you guys to make an account. All right, let's go. This is a crab dance for Jesse. Clap for that, you stupid bastard. Corn Pop was a bad dude. And he ran a bunch of bad boys. Listen, fuckhead, you fucking crossed the line, claiming I'm the enemy. You got that, you goddamn son of a bitch? Ah! Ah, yeah! I 
I don't give a fuck what you think, bitch. Good morning. Sunday morning, morning. Cut that bitch off. Thank you for Iron Bell. We lied, we cheated, we sneak on store. China, 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 China. And you ain't black. There's always the macro. And then there's the micro. Do not come. Do not come. I'm gonna come. You talking to me? Ladies and gentlemen, I'll have two number nines, a number nine large. We got him. Because I have to do it myself. I know it's not. <laughs> I've fallen and I can't get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. <laughs> oh. Disgusting. She was 12, I was 30, but anyway. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Why you text in? Why, 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 You're getting nervous, man. Calm down. It's okay. Okay, 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 okay. Suck my dick and choke on it. I yield my time. Fuck you! Once again, thank you guys very much. So let's continue with the show. Um, Again, I, I have faith in you guys to subscribe and rumble and donate if you're if you're of course able to i want to talk about this this allegation that the um this lie that the israelis spread about um hamas and again i i you know i was wondering if i should because it's like by bringing it up it's like you're 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 basically helping them but this is so scandalous it's it's a detail about it that is so scandalous i had to share it with you so you're, you're you might find this actually quite 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 funny just how pathetic it is um so let, let's begin so you guys remember that the Israelis made this ridiculous claim uh, on October 7th that there was mass rape. And of course, you know, uh, we didn't believe them because there's no evidence. I'm, I'm still waiting to this day for one shred of evidence. There's none. Uh, you know, and, and ironically, I should point out, I, I should point out there is a, a mountain of evidence of Israelis, Israelis raping Palestinians, men, women, uh, children. You know, uh, this is Israeli army, Israeli guards, and they even the Israeli army even raped the women in the army. There's tons and tons of cases like this. Just look it up yourselves. If, if, you, if you don't want to go watch the videos I did, I'm, the, the best part is I'm using Israeli sources to prove it. So it's not, it's not even like you have to go look that far. But in any case, I want to show you something because the, uh, you know, the central claim um, that, that this came from was a New York Times story, and, and, uh, or stories, I should add. And they were written by the same three people. Okay, and, and I'm going to expose some things to you that, that many have covered, you know, uh, Grey Zone and um, uh, Intifada and uh, intercepting, you know, um, and, uh, and others and, and Squirrel. And, and so, you know, the, the, the thing is that what I have said from the very beginning is that, look, I don't, I don't need to know that the people at the New York Times are corrupt. I know they're corrupt. Yeah. Uh, as long as there's no evidence, I'm not buying it because the Israelis lie all the time. Okay, so what I'm about to show you is not necessary to know that they lied. We know that they fucking lied because there's no proof. So that, you know, just to, 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 to be clear. And, and another thing you have to understand is that Hamas planned this uh, very carefully um, with, with exceptional operational security. You know, the fact that they, you could organize something like this um, without any leaks, you know, an airtight ship. Uh, and then execute this as, a, as a, from a military point of view, from a strategic point of view, it, it is exceptional. And so just ask yourselves, th these are highly disciplined, highly trained, exceptional fighters. Do you really think that they did all this just so they could supposedly rape uh, uh, a bunch of Israelis? I mean, I, I'm sorry, I don't buy this. This is ridiculous. You have to also remember that, that, that these are not just any fighters. I mean, it's, it's Hamas, you know, they, they, they are... Uh, if you look at Hezbollah, it's the same thing. They are guided by Islamic principles. So, you know, it, it's, it's... They have a very strict code of rules for war. And I should remind you that, that uh, a thousand years before there was any Geneva Convention or Hague Convention, uh, the Arabs are the ones who came up with, with these rules that, you know, you shouldn't execute the women and children or execute prisoners of war. You should treat them fairly. The Arabs came up with this. They came up with these things. They actually employed these things in, in, uh, in war a thousand years before Europeans even thought to write these things down. So you shouldn't remember that. 
in any case, let me let me proceed to show you what's going on. So you have um these uh these three people at the New York Times who who wrote a lot of these uh, stories, okay? Um Adam Seller, Anat Schwartz, and Jeffrey Gettleman. Okay? Now, these people are are all uh Zionists and and Jewish, okay? What makes this even more scandalous is that Anat Schwartz is from the Israeli army, okay? So she, she was in Israeli army intelligence, um, and she brought in this guy, Adam Sella, who is her nephew by marriage. So basically, she, this, this woman, Anna Schwartz, she got married, and the person she married has a nep nephew called Adam Sella. And so she brought on her nephew by marriage to write these stories about mass rape you know, in Gaza, or rather in these kibbutz. Um, and... These people, have, first of all, none of them have any, exper any experience covering this issue at all, okay? But not only that, this Adam Sella has, is, a food, is a food reviewer, has written articles about food, yeah, cooking, like actual f food. And, and I, I just want you to ask yourselves, like, <laughs> you, one of them is, is an official propagandist for the Israelis, her nephew is a food reviewer, and these are the people that are the sources for the New York Times, the supposed paper of record, and they're bullshit rape stories. I mean, it's, it's so incredible how difficult it is for them, how hard they try to reach and make things up. Whereas if you look at how Israelis rape Palestinians, there are so many stories, we, we, we could, we'll be here all night, and it's not just Palestinians that they've raped and assaulted. It's also, even among their own ranks, you've got Israeli women being raped by, uh, or sexually assaulted by the Israeli men in the army. That's how rampant it is, you know? And I feel that, th before I continue, it's a good moment to show you this clip from CNN. Listen. You mentioned sexual violence. Uh, I was part of the human rights vetting process for arms going to Israel, and a charity called Defense of Children International Palestine uh, drew our attention at the State Department to the sexual assault, actually the rape, of a 13-year-old boy that occurred in an Israeli prison in the Moscow Bia in Jerusalem. Uh, we examined these allegations. Uh, we believe they were credible. We put them to, Israel, to uh, the government of Israel. And you know what happened the next day? The IDF went into the DCIP offices and removed all their computers and declared them a terrorist entity. Um, I think it is vital that atrocities not happen to anyone, not sexual, not sexual violations, not any kind of gross violation of human rights. You mentioned sex. So again, do you understand what he said? They found a credible case of, of children being raped by Israelis. They put these accusations to the Israeli government, and then they, the, the Israeli government responded by declaring them a terrorist organization and confiscating their computers. So much for Israeli democracy and accountability. I swear to God, every single thing, every single one, down to the tiniest detail, every single accusation that Israelis make about Palestinians it's not just made up, it's, it's real, but it's something that Israel has done to the Palestinians. And it's backed up by proof, by evidence. That's the difference, is that you can fucking prove this. The Israelis can't prove a fucking thing. You have to believe them. I'm supposed to believe a private, a private screening that you gave to a bunch of corporate journalists? Guess what? I'm fucking not believing it because you have a track record of lying more than anyone on the fucking planet. I will do everything except fucking believe you until you show me evidence. Four months later, no evidence. And guess what? These people have been ratted out. They've been exposed as a bunch of frauds. Someone who's reviewing peanuts is now an expert in mass rape as a weapon of war. Uh, Jesus, what, what, an, what a colossal embarrassment. So now, so now look, look at what happened. Now, she has had to resign, this, this Schwartz, okay? She's had to resign. And I'll come back to her, to, 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 to her in a second. But just this guy, Jeffrey Gettleman, he had his own scandal about a month ago. This is end of January. Basically, what happened is that the New York Times, they went um, and, and interviewed uh, a family uh, who, who um, they claimed that, that the daughter had been raped, okay? And, and, and she was killed on October 7th. Now, when the family saw the headline that came out, I mean, they were stunned. They were stunned because they had never told the New York Times that their daughter had been raped. On the contrary, they had made it 
you know, a point to, to explain to them that this did not happen. She was just killed, but no one raped her. And the New York Times, you know, this is, I mean, a flagrant violation of ethical, uh, of, of journalism ethics. You know, they just lied and printed that she was raped. And then the family complained about this, right? So here, this is the... Uh, Yeah, this is the story here, right? So, her name is Gal, and the family name is Abdush, okay? So, the, the New York Times, and, and again, who wrote the story? Oh, look, it's the same three. Jeffrey Kettleman, Anna Schwartz, and Adam Seller, the same three Zionists. So they, they, I mean, think of how disrespectful that is, that you go to interview a family about their, their deceased um, rel a relative or, or, or member, and then you, you just make something up about them that, that just, I mean, it's, 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 this is not a misunderstanding. This is clearly on purpose, right? And then they say they made 150 interviews with alleged victims of families. Where are they? Where are they? If, they, if, if I were them... If I were in their shoes, the first fucking thing I do is publish every single one of the interviews, every single one, unredacted, for everyone to read. Oh no, you have to believe us. And you know what's incredible is that this woman, and that's, uh, so, so sorry, I, I was going to tell you about Gettleman, right? And then go back to Schwartz. So th this, this guy, Jeffrey Gettleman, about this, girl, the, um, uh, this, this uh, family whose daughter they said was raped and, and when she wasn't. There was such a scandal inside the New York Times about a month ago that they, they ended up shelving a podcast uh, episode that they were going to put out. So they had, they had gone and, and done the interview with this family, with Abdush, and then published it. The family went nuts. And then there was supposed to be an episode, you know, an audio recording that would come out. And it never came out because the, the, there was such a, a dispute inside the New York Times about the scandal. Right? So that's number one. Disgraced. Disgraced. Absolutely disgraced. Now, coming back to, to Anat Schwartz um, and, her, and her peanut reviewing uh, nephew. <laughs> Jesus, you can't make it. You, you, you really couldn't make it up. What happened is that um, she basically gave an interview um, to an Israeli station in December in Hebrew. And this is what I always tell you. Always listen to how Israelis speak in Hebrew. Ignore everything they say in English. Only listen to what they say in Hebrew. I swear to God, it will open your eyes. It's something really incredible they, because they, they feel that they can just be themselves a bit more when they speak in Hebrew. It's just straight up the most violent racist shit you ever heard in your life so she goes and 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 gives this um uh this interview and she says that she says that she started going around and, and calling up all these centers in israel where women would typically report sexual violence right to find out like hey has anyone contacted you did did, did anyone come forward and say this happened this and this happened so here it is let me read this to you from from um uh it's trans translated by The Intercept, and it's an interview that, that uh, um, Annette Schwartz did with the Israeli army radio Khan on December 31st, okay? So, first of all, she admits that the New York Times sanctioned this, okay? It's a very important point I'll get back to afterwards. She says down here that... Um, uh, That in the podcast interview, Schwartz details her extensive efforts to get confirmation from Israeli hospitals, rape crisis centers, trauma recovery facilities, and sex, uh, and sex assault hotlines in Israel, as well as her inability to get a single confirmation from any of them. She was told there had been no complaints made of sexual assaults. The Times spokesperson acknowledged after the Intercept brought the Channel 12 podcast episode to the paper's attention. So basically, the New York Times had printed these stories where Annette Schwarz is claiming that she had found all this evidence. And then the Intercept were like, well, hold on a second. What about this interview in Hebrew that she gave where she said she couldn't find a single fucking example? What about that? And then the New York Times are admitting that, yeah, that's true. And so... Um, So Schwartz began her work on the violence of October 7th, where one would expect by calling around to the designated Room 4 facilities in 11 Israeli hospitals that examine and treat potential victims of sexual violence, including rape. Uh, she says, first thing, I called them all and they told me, no, no complaint of sexual assault was received. She re and then she said, I had a lot of interviews which didn't lead anywhere. I would go to all kinds of psychiatric hospitals, sit in front of the staff. All of them were fully committed to the mission and no one had met a victim of sexual assault. 
The next step was to call the manager of the sexual assault, ho sexual assault hotline in Israel South, which proved equally fruitless, meaning she couldn't find anyone who complained or reported it. The manager told her there were zero reports of sexual violence. She described the call as a crazy in-depth conversation where she pressed for specific cases. She said, did anyone call you? Did you hear anything? How could it be that you didn't? And then she, um, so, you know, it's, it's basically like she wants, she, she is going out with the, uh, uh, you know, with, with her mind made up already that she wants to find proof of sexual assault and there just isn't any. And she's frustrated that no one, there's no, there's not a single report in any of these uh, psychiatric hospitals, rape, um, uh, recovery, uh, or, 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 or trauma centers, nothing, 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 nothing. Not a single fucking case. Don't you find that incredible? I mean, she's basically, it's like she's basically admitting out of guilt that, you know, she, 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 she knows that there's no evidence, so she just fucking made it up. And then listen, listen what, it gets worse, right? So she started calling people in the kibbutz Bi'eri <laughs> and other kibbutzim that were targeted on October 7th in an effort to track down the story. These are these I illegal Israeli settlements. There, nothing, there was nothing, she said. No one saw or heard anything. I mean, that's incredible. Now, she then reached the Unit 669 paramedic who relayed to her the same story he had told other media outlets, which she says convinced her there was a systematic nature to the sexual violence. Okay? So again, this is a military, a military medic, basically. Um, and then she says, oh, okay, so it happened. One person saw it happen in the Bi'eri settlement, so it can't just be one person. What? What does that even mean? She says, because it was two girls, it's sisters in the room. Something about it is systematic. Something about it feels to me that it's not random. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, but th this is... This is... How dare you? How dare you, honestly, like, make this shit up? Something feels systematic. Systematic is like you have 600 fucking rape victims, not two girls in a room. That was a lie, a lie from an army medic. I, I swear to God, these Israelis have no shame. I swear to God, they are the biggest fucking liars on the face of this fucking planet. There is nothing they will not fucking lie about. Nothing. They'll tell you the fucking sky is, is, is uh, purple. I, I, I mean, they're out of their minds. Schwartz said she then began a series of extensive conversations from who? Oh, Zaka. We all know Zaka, a private ultra-Orthodox rescue organization that has been documented to have mishandled evidence and spread multiple false stories about the, uh, about the events of October 7th, including the lies that Hamas beheaded babies and cut the fetus from a pregnant woman's body. The workers in Zaka are not trained forensic scientists, nor are they crime scene experts. A senior Zaka official said, when we go into a house, we use our imagination. Wow, you do, do you? You use your imagination. Well, welcome to Never Never Fucking Land, yeah? The bodies were telling us what happened. That's what happened. Wow, just, you know, ev everybody who is working, you know, everybody works as a forensic scientist, please go home. We don't need you anymore. Zaka have got this. They know what they're doing. <laughs> so, let me, let me just summarize this for you in case you're unable to keep up, because it, it, is, it is a lot. Let me just spell this out very clearly. The woman writing these rape stories for the New York Times, her name is Annette Schwartz. She, she calls every single center in Israel, especially in the South, that deals with sexual violence and where people who are victims of sexual violence would report this. And she cannot find a single, single, not one example, one person who has been raped on October 7th. So then she goes and listens to a lie told by an army medic, which is then later debunked. And she says that because of this single event, that it must be systematic, that it, it's a mass rape. Then she goes to a group of, of fucking nut jobs who are, again, I mean, all Zionists are vile, but th these are especially vile, if, if we can make that distinction. Who, who basically, the, po the point is not whether how vile they are as Zionists. The point is they went around in these uh, settlements and made things up on October 7th. They're liars. They're absolute liars. And they said these things about you saw beheaded babies and so on. So she goes to them, to the biggest fucking liars of all, and she, she quotes them. And it's not just her, I swear to God, I swear to God, if you open up, look, I'm going to do it in front of you, all right? I'm going to open up a BBC article about this. Every one of these outlets is quoting them, okay? Every one of them. 
Look, here's BBC. Okay, 5th of December. What do we have here? There we go. Zaka. So the, all of these outlets in the West are, are quoting a bunch of nut jobs who are providing zero evidence. You know, if it, I, I don't really care who's doing the reporting. If you have evidence and it's real, then it's real. What, 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 can, what can I say? What can anyone argue? If it's real, it's real. There are no photos. It's just like we're supposed to blindly b believe Israelis. No, no. Israelis are the last people on the planet that you should believe about anything. Even if you ask them the fucking time, don't believe them. They, they will lie to you. <laughs> All right. Don't believe them about anything, anything in the world. Not, not even the weather or the time. Nothing. So this is what's going on. Okay. This is what's going on. And then she brings on her fucking nephew, who is a food reviewer, to help her with these lies. And she conceals that. And then the New York Times, they end up firing her. Not because of this. This is what is beautiful. They don't fire her because she is a disgusting liar. And she's trying to paint Hamas and the resistance who are respectful warriors who, ha who, who don't touch women. They don't fire her for that. She they fire her because she liked a few nasty tweets on Twitter. I mean, Jesus, if it, w if it was just about that, you know what? I I'd rather she tells the truth and likes a few nasty fucking tweets than, than likes the nasty tweets and then lies to the whole world about mass rape. How about that? Do you guys agree with me? <laughs> so this is, a, this is a supposedly... You know, it's supposedly the paper of record. The New York Times call themselves the paper of record. That they are, they are the, the, the source, you know, of everything that happens in the world. Like, if you, you're alive in 200 years, what's the paper you go and look out for the truth? You go to the New York Times. No, no, Jesus, no, don't do that. I'm, I, I, please, let this be a warning to future generations. I beg you, don't do that. But they market themselves as this. And the lies, the people they hire to do this job, I mean, it's the most sloppy shit I've ever seen. It, it, is, it is not just unbecoming, it is scandalous. Scandalous within scandalous of a scandal of a fucking uh, a catastrophe that they have done this. I mean, really, just barbaric banana republic journalism. Barbaric. They have butchered the entire profession. They've, they've thrown it into a blender and thrown the blender into a bathtub. I mean, it's just horrific, horrific. How can you even call this reporting? It's just propaganda of the cheapest, shittiest sort. They don't even bother cooking up a, a cover story. Like, man, I, I, I swear to God, I could have done a better job for you. And, and good thing I'm, I'm not going to do that. But I, I could have cooked up a better, a better story for you and covered it up for you better than this. It's, it's so sloppy. But you know what's scary? Th th this is what's scary, is that even though the truth is coming out, that it's too late. People are so dumb in the West, and I'm sorry, I have to say this even though I'm British, people are so dumb in the West, we will believe anything. Th this is how they get away with the propaganda. So, you know, it's like by the time all these Palestinians have been killed, it's like, oh, well, you know, too late, you know. Oh. What I, what, what I find weird as well is that, let, let's, let's assume for a second, let's play devil's advocate, okay? Let's play devil's advocate. And uh, literally... And let us say the Israelis are telling the truth. They're not telling the truth, but let's imagine they are. Okay, so what? So there's mass rape, and therefore you, you kill 30,000 people and starve 2 million people. What the fuck? What, what do these two things have to do with each other? How on earth do you justify the latter? How on earth do you say, oh, well, a bunch of mass rape deserves, you know, genocide? Are you out of your fucking minds? So, I mean, even, even if you buy this garbage, it's, it's still, it doesn't justify what the Israelis are doing. And you shouldn't buy the garbage because the Israelis, through all of their behavior, 75 years ago, three months ago, today is garbage behavior and it's full of lies, right? So, so I mean, this, this is especially why you should scrutinize them. Absolutely scrutinize them more than anyone because of their track record of lying. I mean, this is really just scandalous. I, unbelievable. Unbelievable. And then they, they, she also starts quoting some, some American architect who serves in a rabbinical unit of the Israeli Defense Forces. Why, why don't you quote, I don't know, a, a fucking, uh, 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 what's his name, the angry chef? <laughs> Gordon Ramsay. Why don't you get Gordon Ramsay as well? Why don't you start getting Jamie Oliver as well? You know, since you, since you just like quoting random people. An architect? Why don't, why not a plumber? Why don't, you, why don't you get someone who flips burgers as well and quote them as a source? I, I don't know, since, you know, we're just throwing anyone in there like a salad. Right? Why not? Why, why don't you quote a giraffe as well as, as a source of mass rape and systemic uh, sexual violence? I, I don't know. Do you want to use my table? You can quote my table. I mean, what, what is this crap? Unbelievable.
So this Mendez, this architect, who I, I don't know what she has anything, you know, what she has to do with anything. She also lied and caught, was caught lying. She, she said a baby was cut out of a pregnant woman and beheaded and then the mother was beheaded. Jesus Christ, I mean, do you have proof? Because, you know, when you're saying shit like this, you, you should really back this up. I, you can't make these things up and just say them. Guess what? No pregnant woman died that day, according to the official Israeli list. The official Israeli list of those killed in the attacks. The, the, what's so incredible to me is that these are not just lies. They're things Israelis have done to Palestinians. You heard that correctly. You heard that correctly. The Israelis, during the Deir Yassin massacre in 1948, and it's not, don't take my word for it. I can, I'm going to show you the, the, the United Kingdom's letter. This is at the United Nations. What they wrote about the massacre the week that it happened. This is the United Kingdom at the UN in 1948. Sorry, I think it was 46. Excuse me. The, let, me let me pull up the thing. I did it in my video where the video that was called Every Israeli Accusation is a Confession. I put it in there. Okay, during the Deir Yassin massacre. Just, just look at this. No, no, it was, it was, it was 48. I, I don't know why I, I, I mixed myself up. Anyway, here it is. Okay, here, here's the, the, uh, I, I keep thinking every time it's UK and, and, and Palestine, I think of the King David Hotel. <laughs> here, here you go. This is the, the document, okay? Dated 20th of April. And, and uh, it, it's communication from the UK delegation concerning Jewish attack on the Arab village of Deir Yassin. Okay? Look at the things that they did here. Look at this. So, the deaths of 250 Arab men, women, and children, uh, which took place during this attack in circumstances of great savagery. Of great savagery. Women and children were stripped, lined up, photographed, and then slaughtered by automatic firing. And survivors have told of even more incredible brutalities. Those who were taken prisoner were treated with degrading brutality. Um... And then, uh, of course, they talk about the, the, the Haganah, uh, you know, basically admitting, you know, um, that, that it gave covering fire. It, it helped out the other groups. The, the Haganah is one of the, the terrorist groups that became the IDF. And there are other ones like Irgun and Stern Gang, right? It's, but they all work together. That's what this, this document is one of the th sources that proves that, right? And so... You know, th th this is really, really horrific. Basically, they, they, they were, uh, uh, they raped the women. Um, one man, I, I will show you the video in a second. He saw how the, um, uh, the Palestinians, there was a Palestinian man and his child, and the Israelis threw both the baby and the father into the oven. You know what, I'm just going to pull out my own video because it's literally, I, I put everything in there already, I already condensed it, so there's no point going through it twice. Give me one second. There you go. This one. Okay. So I'm going to put it up on the screen. Yeah, you've got, you also got some quotes from France 24 from the French agency. So you can see these sources are every, is they're, you know, you, they're not Palestinian sources, right? So here you, here you see him talking about rape. This, this is one uh, Israeli soldier laughing about raping uh, Palestinian girls, a 16-year-old girl. <laughs> אבל זה מכוער מאוד, היה לנו בחור אחד, הוא נפטר, הוא היה פרא אדם, הוא לקח פשוט מאוד ורצח אותם בתוך המכלאות. They're a little... Yeah, and then also the rape, seeing the IDF, the rape against Palestinian uh, uh, um, uh, children, uh, against Israelis um, themselves. Here, here, this is also... From Sabra and Shatila, this is this is um, a massacre that was committed against Palestinians uh, in 1982 in Lebanon in the refugee camp. Look what the Israelis did out of her stomach. Really did to Palestinians at the Sabra and Shatila massacre in Lebanon in 1982. One eyewitness saw a pregnant woman who had her baby ripped out of her stomach. They cut her in two. Another woman, she was also pregnant. They ripped the baby from her stomach as well. Doesn't that sound like what the Israelis 
are saying Hamas did on October 7th? The difference is that they're lying, the Israelis. This didn't happen on October 7th. But the Israelis did it to Palestinians in the past, in the Sabra and Shatila massacre, and also similar things in the Deir Yassin massacre, where they were stripping women and raping them. I mean, it's just, it's so fucked up, you know? And, I, and I'll, I'll also remind you that the Turks, the Ottoman Turks, they also did this thing with like cutting open pregnant women and, and you know, butchering the fetus. They did that during the Armenian Genocide um, in 1915. Uh, so you see, you know, Germany, again, always backing the winners, you know? Another, another great uh, contribution to humanity from Germany. They, they, they equipped the Ottoman Turks with the Mauser uh, uh, Car 98 rifles uh, and gave them tons of gear that was used in that genocide. Here's a video of um, this man. Just listen to what he's saying. It's <laughs> وبقولوا للفران ارمي ابنك بالفرن ارمي ابنك بالفرن اسمه حامد قال له انا ما برمي ابني قال له شوي هم ضربوا الحاج حامد على راسه ومسكوا الولد رموه بالفرن انا شفت هالفن شفت هالمنظر ما تمش فيها حيل من مرة يعني بعدين مسكوا الأب حطوا وراه قالوا له الحق ابنك It's incredible the more you learn about this massacre the more you understand So you, you see how every single one of the claims the rape the parading the women around um, you know stripping women and parading them around uh, uh, killing pregnant women ripping the baby out throwing the babies into ovens Every single fucking one of these things is something Israelis have done to Palestinians and is documented and proven. And, you know, and we're supposed to believe that, that, that Hamas, who are, who are, again, I'm not Muslim, but I'm, I'm telling you just, I'm report, my job's to report, and I would be lying to you if I were telling you otherwise. These are highly disciplined, uh, uh, concentrated, uh, you know, serious fighters, and they're guided by their religion. They don't have time for this shit for this, this insane berserker um, uh, war crimes. On the contrary, they are hitting military targets to this day, to this day as I'm speaking to you. When you go online, all you find every single day, Hamas posting videos of themselves hitting military targets, a tank, a bulldozer, troops, a convoy, an APC. What do the Israelis hit? Civilians, a hospital, a refugee camp, an, an infirmary, an ambulance, a, a school. Do you see the difference? It's, it's literally in front of you. It's, it's, I, don't, I don't care what the Israelis claim. Just look at the evidence in front of your eyes. And the same thing with, with Hezbollah. They hit the, the Israeli outposts. They, they don't target civilians. And, and as a matter of fact, what's ironic is that when we talk about Israelis, they don't have civilians. Every single woman and man in Israel has to go join the army. You can't be in the army and be a civilian at the same time. You, you stay in the army from 18 until 40 years old as a reservist. You can be called up any moment. So you, you, you can't be a, a civilian and also in the military at the same time. This is nonsense. In any case, I'm showing you these things because you have to know them. It's not enough to say the Israelis lied about the mass rape hoax. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't care about the fact they lied. They're projecting what they did. Do you understand? This is so, so important. There's a big difference when you say, well, this guy's a bank robber. But when you're, you, you know, I'm a bank robber and I'm accusing them of robbing banks. It, it, this is very, very big. It's much worse. And it, it goes back to the, the, the root cause of the problem is that the Israelis stole this land. They stole it in the most disgusting, violent, evil fashion imaginable. And then they have the fucking nerve to, ex to accuse the Palestinians, the victims of their violent shit, of doing the same things. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Like this level of evil, it's, it's just unprecedented. I've never seen anything like it in history. Even the fucking Nazis didn't go and pretend to be victims, you know, when they were massacring people. They, ju they just massacred people like assholes, but they didn't pretend to be victims on top of it. The Israelis are truly the first people in history to commit a genocide on live television and play the fucking victim at the same time. It's, un it's truly unbelievable and bewildering. And then people just like, you know, they're okay with this. Yo. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is... You know, I, I, I've seen many people say this before, and I'm, and I'm going to say it to you. 
you know, sometimes people wonder, well, if I were alive in World War II, how would I have behaved? Would I have resisted? Would I have, would I have had the courage to stand up? Would I have come, you know, when it came to it, when it came down to it, when push came to shove, would I have actually done the right thing? This is your answer right now. Your behavior right now is the answer to this question. You're, this is, you know, the, the, the world is at a, at a, at a juncture here, at, at, at a crossroads, at a moment of great peril, especially for the Palestinians, a you know, mortal peril. And, and we have the choice to do something about it or do nothing about it. And, and you know, judgment day, there's going to come a day of judgment. Uh, I don't know what form that will take. I have no clue. But, the, you know, what goes around comes around. The people who do nothing, who just stand idly by. Man, you, you're going to be shamed right now. I, I know people want to say, well, history is going to look down on you. No, no, no. I'm looking down on you right now. <laughs> I'm not waiting for fucking history. You know? Uh, what, what the British government are doing is fucking disgusting and scandalous. And especially after, you know, put the Palestinians aside for a second. Just think of your own self-interest. Like, if you're a selfish person, you think, well, you know, what, what about the UK? You should fucking hate the Israelis. The, 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 the Israelis, you know, they're, they are enemies of the UK. They censor free speech. They take our fucking money. They, 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 uh, they've performed what is state capture. They have attacked British soldiers and citizens and politicians. Why the fuck would you like them? Not to mention that you should have humanity and compassion for the Palestinians first and foremost. But I'm just trying to argue, you know, every, every uh, 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 point of view. The same thing goes for the Americans. You know, if you look at what the Israelis are, what, what do you get? What do you get from supporting Israel? You, you, you're censored at home. You, you, have no, you, know, you have less free speech or no free speech, honestly, if you look at it uh, uh, objectively. Uh, you give them billions of dollars, and then your image is worsened around the world. People look down on the United States for supporting Israel. What the fuck do you get from supporting Israel? Literally zero. As, as a matter of fact, you get screwed by supporting Israel. So, you know, it, it, whatever way you look at it, it's scandalous. And these people that call themselves uh, reporters that are, again, that are poisoning a U.S. paper. This is the New York Times we're talking about. We come back again to, you know, what, what is the West getting out of supporting the Israelis? I don't, I don't know, because this is damaging not just uh, the, the lives and, and, and the well-being of Palestinians, but it's damaging also the, the infrastructure, the economy, uh, the image of, of Britain and the United States. And even these papers, which are supposed to do really good journalism and hold the state to account, are, are abdicating their duties. They're not fulfilling their duties. We need to have a fourth pillar in, a, in democracy, if, if you really believe in democracy, that holds the government to account. You can't have that. When the New York Times is busy pushing Israeli propaganda. Do you understand? So it's, it's like a, it's a poison pill to, to, to support Israel. We get nothing from supporting Israel. We lose by supporting Israel. And the Palestinians lose more than anyone. They lose their lives. Let me show you also just one last thing here with, this, with the New York Times, how they sanction the story, which, is, which makes this even more scandalous. Because she says here that, that um, the New York Times, um, they are the ones who, who, who basically... Uh, uh, pushed them to do, the, uh, to do this. She said that the New York Times said, let's do an investigation into sexual violence. It was more of a, of a case of them having to convince me. And, and then the host cuts her off and says, it, it was a proposal of the New York Times, the entire thing. And she says, unequivocally, unequivocally, obviously, of course. Uh, the paper stood behind us 200% and gave us the time, the investment, the resources to go in-depth. Um, and... Uh, um, with this investigation as much as needed. And, and you know, to me, this, this is enormous malpractice because we, we cannot allow the New York Times, after the damage that they have, have uh, uh, wrought, to simply, you know, place the blame on the shoulders of some fucking Zionist uh, uh, bitch from the Air Force. No, 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 no. She is admitting that the, this came from the top. And they're only, they're only firing her now on the basis of her tweets. It's really because she got caught. They, 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 but they're trying to make it about the tweets because if they come, if the New York Times say, well, we're firing her because we lied about all this mass rape, that looks a lot worse than saying we have to fire her because she liked a very bad tweets. You understand? But they've been caught. And I want to show you some of the tweets, by the way. It's, it's, uh, um, she, she liked some things like, uh, well, you know, typical Zionist stuff. You know, let's turn Gaza into a wasteland. Let's kill all the Palestinians. Something like that. Um... Yeah, hold on. Where is it? Yeah, so the, she liked a tweet that said Israel should turn the Gaza Strip into a slaughterhouse. Violate any norm on the way to victory. 
Those in front of us are human animals who don't hesitate to violate minimal rules. <laughs> yes. We're just a bunch of goyim, you know. You, you should remember this word. This is, um, this is what Israelis use to describe non-Jews. It's a uh, goyim. You know, it's like a non-believer, an infidel, right? A human animal. That's what it translates to. In any case, um, uh, you know, to totally not racist and supremacist at all. You know, of, yeah, of course not, right? It's, it's the Palestinians who are racist. We're, we, you and I are racist, not these people who call Palestinians human fucking animals and then massacre them. Yeah. Oh, no. It's not the Israelis. Of course not. They, they would never do anything. <laughs> you know what this reminds me of, by the way? Another Israeli bitch at the New York Times who lied about weapons of mass destruction. I couldn't help but think of this propagandist Judith Miller. This, this piece of shit who lied about the... Basically, you know, the propaganda for Iraq, you have to understand, and I remember this as a boy, it didn't begin in, in 2003. They, they had to, like, slowly build this up from 2001 with the anthrax attacks. What they said is that basically, uh, the, these letters, that were, <laughs> again, letters, who invented these things? Zionists invented the letter bombs and started using them in such a mass capacity. So the irony of them choosing this specific method is so funny. Someone was, was mailing letter uh, bombs to uh, uh, Congress uh, filled with anthrax. And then she, al along with other people in the mainstream media, were saying, well, you know, the, the lab results uh, say that there's, um, what is that the thing? Is it was with a B bubon or something like that? I'm, I'm not thinking of bubonic plague. But uh, th there was a specific chemical uh, 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 element that, that was used in there um, that they were saying, well, this proves it was Saddam Hussein. You know, it, it proves without a doubt that Saddam Hussein is the one manufacturing this, um, and, uh, and that, uh, you know, it has to be him. In any case, uh, so they, this is how they started putting this into Americans' minds. You have to keep in mind that was October 2001. It's just after 9-11. So they, they started creating this link in people's minds after 9-11 had just happened. That, you know, 9-11 that has something to do uh, with, with, with Saddam Hussein. Iraq uh, and uh, Al-Qaeda have something to do with Iraq. They have literally nothing to do with Iraq. They actually fucking hate each other. But, of course, nuanced thinking and, you know, uh, and, and reality don't matter in the New York Times. So, in any case, they start pushing this stuff. And then she is one of the people that starts pushing this weapons of mass destruction thing the, the, the most, you know? All these, these things that came out in the New York Times about Saddam Hussein has, has you know, these mobile trucks... All, all sorts of propaganda, all of this, the, le the lead up to the Iraq war. She is one of the people that manufactured this consent. And guess what? Her father is a Russian Jew and she lives in Israel. I mean, wh wh why do Israelis have such a hard on for murdering Arabs? What is it exactly about them that they love massacring Arabs? They lie no matter what it takes in the biggest newspapers on earth to make sure that Arabs get murdered. Are you f okay in the fucking head? Do you have a problem or something? That you have to kill Arabs, you just make up the wildest shit, mass rapes, weapons of mass destruction. What's next? Supermassive black hole? Fuck out of here. Really, it's just disgusting. Honestly, it's disgusting. It lies, lies, lies. This is why you should never trust Israelis, you never trust Zionists, and you never trust the mainstream media. Biggest liars on the planet. Speaking of mainstream media and how fucking pathetic they are, man, you're going to love this. I swear you're going to love this. <laughs> man, you're going to love this. Okay, so let me show you what happened. So, you, you guys know I've been covering this war from the very beginning, and, and especially I've, been, I've, I've done a lot of focusing on Yemen, right? Uh, and the blockade. Now, it's very funny because I was, I was tweeting about a ship, that, a, Brit a British ship that the Yemenis targeted on February 19th. And the, uh, these, uh, these fucking pathetic losers that no one has ever heard of who call themselves fact checkers, you know, um, and uh, uh, they, they, they started getting very upset about this because uh, I said that the, the Yemenis had helped the crew reach safety. How do I know this? I'm going to show you right now. But I just want to show you their emails, first of all. This is really funny. This is really funny. I get these, these two emails from these two nobodies that no one's ever heard of, Charlotte Green and Alex Dumbass. And they, they start saying that, uh, oh, I'm from the UK's independent fact-checking organization. Whenever you hear fact-checking, it means bullshitter. Because as a journalist, you should be checking facts anyway. I know this is a foreign concept for people in mainstream media. That I don't know why they need to have separate you know, institutions and establishments and organizations to do the fact-checking. Because you know, that should be part of the primary 
uh, objective, but nevertheless. Um, and uh, they got very upset that uh, I pointed out that Yemen actually helped the crew uh, that of the ship that they had sunk, right? And, and she got very upset about the fact that uh, um, I said that uh, the ship uh, was sunk as opposed to sinking. Oh, well, you know, I'm sorry, but if it's... If the, half the ship is underwater, what the fuck do you call that then? It's simmering in the pan? Obviously, it's been fucking sunk. And I, the irony is just today, it, it, finally, got, it finally sunk. <laughs> so, you know, they're just trying to, just trying to like, split hairs to, because they're, they're, they're assholes. And then it's like, oh, could I have a reply by 5 p.m.? No, fuck you. And then there's another one here, this clown um, who, who, uh, who says, I'm a reporter with a dispatch. Really, are you? What the hell's the dispatch? And then, um, I, this is so funny because he starts off with this article, I just found it by accident about me, um, where he starts off by saying, uh, you know, um, um, met her something with Al-Akhbari, and I'm like, Al-Akhbari? The Syrian channel? I haven't been on there in three years. Why, why don't you say that I was on the Times Radio, for example, or LBC? You know, it's like, it's just anything that is, that, oh, Syria, um, Iran, uh, Russia, okay, let's put those three first. That's, the, that's how we're going to define this person. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> I swear to God, these people make me laugh. They're so funny. They're so funny, man. And they, 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 they think that what I'm saying is false. If they bothered to actually look up what happened, they would know that the crew was helped by Yemen. How do we know this? Here's the evidence. So I, I, I posted this statement from the Yemeni armed forces from, from al Bukhaiti. And, uh, you know, he, he says here that during the operation, when they, when they targeted this ship called the Ruby Mar, we made sure that the ship's crew exited safely. I also, I heard this originally in Arabic from, from the, uh, the, the daily speeches that they, they give, the press briefings. Now, if this were the UK ministry, the, the, the MOD or the Pentagon, I'm not going to trust them because they lie about everything. The Yemenis have never lied about anything in this blockade. Not a single thing. They have never given incorrect information. They have never lied about anything. So I have every in, uh, uh, reason to believe them. Also, the fact that, that the crew, the 24-man crew, were taken to Djibouti by a passing vessel, does, you know, what, what does that mean? That, how does that disprove that the Yemenis helped? When, you're, when we're talking about a rescue operation, a million groups and organizations and NGOs and, and uh, rescuers take part in the operation. It's not just two people, one country, you know, and, and, and a passing vessel. That doesn't preclude the fact that the Yemenis helped. The Yemenis do not just randomly throw this in there. The Yemenis have been shooting, at, at firing at ships almost every day for four months and on purpose have never killed a single person because that would, that would uh, uh, well, it wouldn't lend them any credibility. It would certainly detract, you know, it, it would certainly um, d distract from the, the message, which is to save lives in Gaza. So the Yemenis, we know for a fact, do not want to kill anyone. We, they have not killed a single person to date with this blockade, not one person. So... This is the first time that one of the ships they, they, they struck starts to sink. If they don't want to kill anyone, of course their primary reaction is going to be, oh shit, we have to save the crew. And so they did. And the fact that somebody else picked them up doesn't mean that they didn't save them. I don't know why these two things contradict each other. They absolutely do not. Um, you know, they could have easily killed the crew if this were the Americans uh, or the British. They would have fucking sunk the whole ship, killed everybody on board and said, oops, collateral damage. You know, it's like the, 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 the Yemenis do something good and all these fucking morons want to do is shit all over them and say, no, it's not true. You're not fucking true. <laughs> so afterwards here, um, uh, you know, they, they, they uh, also, yeah, I, I, I showed these videos of Galaxy Leader. Why did I show this? Because that's the first ship the Yemenis captured. And what, what did they do when they, when they captured the, the ship? Did they put bags on the heads of the crew? Did they take them down and throw them in a dungeon with no light and no food? Because that's what the Americans would have done. No. What the Yemenis did is this. They, uh, they um, <laughs> took the crew aside. Hold, hold on, I'll translate for you. <laughs> yeah, so he said that you're guests here and we consider every single one of you to be Yemenis. Like us and we'll get you anything you want. So do you, you see the difference in treatment? So, so this is from the same blockade by the same Yemeni forces, and we have evidence on video of how they treat a crew of a ship. They don't have any quarrels with the crews. They don't want to kill the crews. On the contrary, when they actually engage with another crew, um, they, they, they say, you're Yemeni. 
We get you anything you want. So this is further evidence. This further substantiates the fact that the Yemenis have every interest not to, to, uh, uh, to kill the crew of the Ruby Mar, but on the contrary, to rescue them. Right? But of course, they, they, you know, you can't say this because, uh, because these morons just want to say bad things about Yemen. They're such pathetic robots. I swear, they're so pathetic. Just go do, so, do another job. Do, do another job. You're not reporters. You're just garbage propagandists. Garbage. Truly garbage. So, you know, as I said here, the whole point of Yemen's blockade in the first place is to save lives. That's the point of the blockade. It's to punish the Israelis um, with Article 1 of the, Gen uh, sorry, the Genocide Convention, not Geneva, Article 1 of the Genocide Convention, which says prevent and punish perpetrators of genocide. That's what, what Yemen are doing. They're just following uh, uh, international law and upholding their obligations. And, um, and uh, the whole point is to save lives. So once again, for, this further substantiates the fact that they would never put the, risk, uh, put the crew of another ship at risk or let them drown. On the contrary, they, when they say we helped ensure their rescue, that means they did. And, and here's another very important point. If Yemen were lying, why have Djibouti, the port authority in Djibouti, uh, 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 why haven't they come out and said this is not true? What about the crew? Why, why haven't the crew come out and said Yemen is lying? They haven't. So this, once again, this also shows the Yemenis are telling the truth. If they weren't telling the truth, the port authority in Djibouti and the, and the crew would say so. Um, so, you know, this is just a funny episode I wanted to tell you about. It's, it's so, really, just, this is like, you know, when I see this crap, it's like swatting a bunch of flies. I mean, it's just, <laughs> they're so bad at it. They're so bad at it, I swear to God, you know. They can't understand, they can't grasp that Yemen do things properly. Like, like when, when they prosecute a, a blockade or a sanctions regime, they don't put, uh, you know, the objective first uh, 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 above everything else. They, they put lives first. Even, even if it, you know, it would run counter to the, the aims of the blockade, they still put the lives first, you know. They can easily sink the, the entire ship, like really sink every single ship. They don't do that. And, and if you think for one second that Yemen don't have the firepower, you're mistaken, because Yemen, on the contrary, have anti-ship ballistic missiles, which almost no one has. This is a new technology. It's a new form of warfare. It's very much like you see on a lesser scale, uh, when you see Hezbollah, for example, using ATGMs, <laughs> you know, as like snipers almost for any in, in any capacity. Although, again, this is a bit of a different example. But, you know, my point is just that Yemen have the firepower, they could easily kill every single crew that violates the blockade. The Americans would certainly do that if it were up to them. Um, you know, they would just shoot you down. You can't even fucking fart and cough, you know, without being shot in America. So, you know, the, what, what, is so, what is so strange about them helping the crew? I don't understand this. It's only strange if you have an agenda to come out and just talk crap about Yemen. That, 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 then it's strange. If you're a Zionist, if you're an imperialist, then of course it's strange to you because, you know, everything the Yemenis do is wrong. Anyway, just thought I'd share that with you. It's a bit of fun. Thank you to uh, uh, to Mike for the uh, donation. Thank you to DB Cooper and to uh, to uh, to Jean as well for the donations on on Rockfin. I appreciate it very much. We've also got some on PayPal. This one over here is from. Uh, from Hussein who says to support Richard an independent legend of a journalist his passion is rare thank you for your, you're very kind um, and, I, and I appreciate that very much uh, thank you to uh, Justin also for um, raising your membership on Patreon I'll play you a crab dance in just a moment and uh, we also have a do another donation on PayPal this comes from um, Janosik thank you and we have um, Tarane who just joined as well on Patreon so I owe them a crab dance as well we have one here from SMC who says, thank you for being a journalist with morals and integrity. Thank you. Um, you're, you're, all, you're all very kind. And we have another one from uh, Gritty. Uh, for, thank you for the donation. We have another one from Harold. Uh, uh, sorry, from Harold. Uh, and uh, there's another one on, on PayPal from Jerry. You're, you're all very kind. Thank you, guys. I didn't see a note, but I hope I didn't miss anything. And I have to say, uh, again, thank you to Jesse, Pamela, uh, to Amal, and to... Uh, Tarane for joining on Patreon. Thank you guys very much. And um, again, if you want to support the work I do, you, you want to support independent journalism, everything I do is free. I don't have any premium stuff. It's just if, you, if you're able to and if you want to, because I, I, I believe in keeping the videos ac accessible to everyone so that if you want to share it, you just share it and it works. Um, now, YouTube unfortunately demonetized um, the channel. So, um, you know, I'm asking you guys kindly, if you can, to help me recoup all this money that, that, I'm, that I have lost and I, I am losing because it was my main source of 
uh, income or revenue. It was everything was on YouTube. So um, if you're able to donate on Patreon monthly, I would really appreciate it. It's patreon.com slash Richard Medhurst. And uh, on PayPal, I'll put all the links in the description, but I owe you guys a crab dance. So thank you very much. Clap for that, you stupid bastard. Corn Pop was a bad dude. And he ran a bunch of bad boys. Listen, fuckhead. You have fucking crossed the line. Claiming I'm the enemy. You got that, you goddamn son of a bitch? I don't give a fuck what you think, bitch. Good morning. Sunday morning, morning. Cut that bitch out. Thank you for Iron Bell. We lied, we cheated, we stayed on the door. China. 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 And you ain't black. There's always the macro. And then there's the micro. Do not come. Do not come. I'm gonna come. You talking to me? Ladies and gentlemen, I'll have two number nines, a number nine large. We got him. Because I have to do it myself. I know it's not. No. <laughs> I've fallen and I can't get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. <laughs> oh. Disgusting. She was 12, I was 30, but anyway. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Why a tech center? Why, 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 You're getting nervous, man. Calm down. It's okay. Okay, 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 okay. Suck my dick and choke on it. I yield my time. Fuck you! Thank you guys again very much. I, I appreciate it. We, we've got a donation here from uh, Zebedee who says the New York Times has been lying about Zionist terrorism in Palestine uh, since at least 1914. That's correct. Uh, but ironically, you reminded me there was a headline that they published. Um, not a headline. It was just a, 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 something in the paper. From New I, don't, I don't remember how, when this was. Yeah, it was actually it, it was uh, the Deir Yassin massacre. But they didn't, they didn't um, go into full detail on it. But uh, I, it was funny reading the, the description because... Back then, they would also say, well, you know, um, they weren't as, as, as uh, you know, uh, uh, articulate as the, the British, but um, they would still call them a band of, you know, um, gunmen and so on. And that, it's always important to remember this is what the Israelis are. They're a bunch of, of, of thugs, you know. Uh, Jamie says, after the age of colonialism, the Western world basically said, we need to do one last settler colony. Please, it's only one. The story of Israel. <laughs> that's exactly it. I swear. Um, that's that was very good. We've got another one here from uh, on Rumble. This is from uh, from J zero J zero zero says free Palestine, free Assange, free Pelletier. Yeah, Leonard Pelletier. Uh, decolonize the world. Keep up the fight, Richie. Th thank you very much. And um, and absolutely, I agree with you hundred um, percent. And we have another one here from Makic who says, if, if for nothing else, hate them for taking our money. Well, I appreciate the donation. Thank you. You're very, you guys are very kind. Um, and uh, I need to find that, that, that tiny snippet from the New York Times, actually, uh, if I can get my hands on it. Um, yeah, and it, again, thank you guys very much. Also, thank you to George for joining and uh, Simon for raising your membership on Patreon. I'll play you guys a crab dance as I, uh, as I pan out. But, but seriously, I, I'm, very, I'm very grateful to all of you. Uh, please remember to hit like on, on Rumble, on Rockfin, on Odyssey, on uh, YouTube. I'm streaming on all of them, so just remember to hit the like button. And again, guys, I know it's annoying, but please go make an account on Rumble. I need you guys to help me because they demonetize YouTube, so I'm trying to get more subscribers um, uh, that were on YouTube over to, to Rumble as well, so we have both of them, okay? It, it's free. It only takes a minute, and it, it, the address is very simple. It's rumble.com uh, slash uh, Richard Medhurst. I'm, I'm typing it out for you right here. So just make an account, subscribe, and you'll find all the, um, the usual left or, uh, you know, anti-imperialist channels that you like on there as well. Uh, so, you know, there you go. And I, I damn it, I spelled, I spelled it rumble. <laughs> uh, hold on, I'm typing it out again. Give me a second. Um, and again, you know, huge, huge resounding victory to George Galloway. I'm very happy. It's, it's, it's excellent. At least one good thing, you know, at least one good thing. Um, and it's great to see him, uh, winning and and he's gonna give him hell so i'm i'm happy and proud
again, thank you, thank you guys, thank you all of you, and also on on Rockfin uh, for the donations uh, and everywhere else. I'll I'll play you an outgoing crab dance. Uh, remember to share the videos, and tomorrow I'll be live again on the channel at uh, 3 p.m. New York, so 3 p.m. Eastern. That's uh, um, that's noon in Los Angeles and uh 9 p.m in paris 8 p.m in london i'll be live uh with uh professor asad abu khalil so make sure you tune in so you don't miss that um you we'll have a good discussion about palestine and so on uh again thank you guys very much take care bye bye a is for all men and women created by go you know the you know the thing b is for I'm beginning to see why your wife left you c is for corn pop was a bad dude and he ran a bunch of bad boys d is for don't worry i i'm so serious children i love to hear them e is for excuse to walk by the dealer and say, no, I, I'm not going to be a mule. I, I, I'm, I, I, I got something to do. I got to go do boom, boom, boom. F is for a friend, time friend, and she's a friend. She's been my friend in and out of public life. Is G is for go to Joe 30330. H is for hairy legs that turn, that, 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 that turn uh, uh, um, blonde in the sun. And the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down. I is for... I'm a Democratic candidate for the United States Senate. J is for... Just look at the record. I have President Biden. Vice President Biden. Well, I tell you what, if you look at my record and you still doubt about my commitment, then you should vote for somebody else. K is for... I have kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. L is for... The lion dog face pony soldier. M is for make sure the television, excuse me, make sure you have the record player on at night. The, the, the phone, make sure the kids hear work. N is for uh, um, NATO. O is for the only African American woman that's ever been elected to the United States Senate. P is for poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. R is for rest her soul and uh, um, although she's, wait, your mom's still, your mom's still alive. Is S is for Send a text to the word United. T is for Truth over facts. U is for Union workers, the UAW took incredible cuts in their future. V is for All right, thanks so much. W is for Why, 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 you're getting nervous, man. Calm down, it's okay. X is for Xi Jinping. Y is for And you ain't black. Z is for She's sleeping? By the way, this is my little sister Valerie, and I'm Jill's husband. Oh no, this is the Oh, you switched on me. This is my wife, this is my sister. They switched on me. Clap for that, you stupid bastard. Corn Pop was a bad dude. And he ran a bunch of bad boys. Listen, fuckhead. You fucking crossed the line. Claiming I'm the enemy. You got that, you goddamn son of a bitch? I don't give a fuck what you think, bitch. Good morning. Sunday morning, morning. Cut that bitch out. Thank you, Brian Bell. We lied, we cheated, we sneak off the China. 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 And you ain't black. There's always the macro. And then there's the micro. Do not come. Do not come. I'm gonna come. You talking to me? Ladies and gentlemen, I'll have two number nines, a number nine large. We got him. Because I have to do it myself. I know it's not. <laughs> I've fallen.
and I can't get up. Get up. Get up. Disgusting! She was 12, I was 30, but anyway. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can I'll write it and we'll do it live! Why attack center? Why 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 you're getting nervous, man? Calm down. It's okay. Okay, 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 okay. Suck my dick and choke on it! I yield my time! Fuck you!